We'll get back to this um, performance just in case it's copywritten. That is the great late James Brown, the most sampled artist pertaining to rap, hip hop. Okay. Um, it's very interesting. I, I just got through saying a little bit of Aphrodamas and he's on this lying uh, campaign, this fake uh, bitch ass nigga who's a Gambian American who wants to try to back up. Akon when there's no backing up to have. Um, they're wanting to, again, trying to take away the narrative that our music is the best. And so you have all these people scrambling from all these other cultures, whether it's the Puerto Ricans, Latinos, whether it's Jamaicans, now it's Africans. It, it, it doesn't end. And what do we have going on? We have our men who failed us in leadership positions to put those motherfuckers in check. There are some um, YouTubers that are now expressing what I'm doing. 
I don't think they're going as deep as I'm going though, but this should have been done a while ago. Um, and we didn't do it again because we didn't know we had to for the most part. But when you let other cultures into your music and you don't have them pay homage to you or recognize you, then they get full of themselves later on after they are um, superstars. And that's what we are finding out with the likes of Akon and uh, Joe, Fat Joe, and um, all the others that try to come Buster Rhymes and all these other nimcompoops that are now trying to claim that our shit is their stuff from the beginning and that they've been here all along and it's just not true. And it's so disturbing and disgusting that I have to be the one to do this um, because too many men are too, too concerned with uh, rubbing um, somebody off wrong, the wrong way, because they are in hopes of getting pussy. Again, I really mean what I'm saying. I'm not just joking. When I say that what they're doing is about the pussy, um, they don't care about our culture. They care about what they can try to get from women. And it's just sad that they don't have no integrity. It is so sad that they don't know the greatness of their potential through our history and that they would rather forfeit. They would rather tap out. They would rather allow other cultures of men to lead them and tell them what the fuck to think and how the fuck to feel about their own fucking heritage and their own lineage and ancestors that have produced the greatest music the world has ever known. And it's just a tragedy that I have to be the one to say it. And I'm not going to clean it up. It's the truth. Look at when you go on platforms and you hear these so-called Pan-African men or these other black American men who are married to non-blacks and how they sound when they're supposed to be representing us. They sound spineless. They sound clueless. They're waiting for someone to tell them what to think, what to parrot, what to believe. Like a bitch. Like a hoe. It's sad. But let's get to what I was trying to show. Here's a sampled song that came from the great James Brown to let you understand that yes, our music has been sampled. Yes, it's been remixed. Yes, the beats have been used over and over again from past bands, from past songs, over and over and over again. It began with our music though. And now after 50, 60 years later, they feel like it's a safe space to now claim other times that doesn't have nothing to do with here and now. But listen to this. This is a newer beat. I got this, by the way, from Trash Bag Beats, okay? Oh, thank you for appearing. I, I dozed off, Auntie. <laughs> I ate some food and I dozed off. I thought I was going to wake up after an hour and I overslept. But I'm glad I slept because I have a lot more energy. And uh, I, I literally just woke up about... 20 minutes ago after walking my dog. So you'll hear my wake up tone in a minute. <laughs> but let's look at this beat, an example of James Brown beat, so, so that you guys can understand what I'm talking about. Thank <laughs> you. 
again, this is a, a mere example of a sample that was derived from James Brown, It's a Man's World. I believe it was written back in 1966. Now let's listen to the original so that you guys can hear how it was reused in the beat, but you can hear the foundation of the original song, which is James Brown. Okay, check it out. Okay, that's just an example. I'm pretty sure as he got older after 1966, he upgraded more and more um, music he added to that. It's a man's world. But I showed you the original as far back as I could find so that you can hear again how it sounded is in its natural state. And then, you know, how the samplers took it and ad-libbed to the original to make a beat to make a sample to uh, call it hip hop or R&B or whatever they called it, rap. But they wouldn't have got the idea without the original song to listen to and hear what they wanted to hear and ad lib on top of the music and say, oh, you know what? I can add some horns there. Or I can add an extra um, drum there. I can add a saxophone there. I can add this and that and the other, but you did not create the song as it was. So you cannot take credit for the sampled beat or the rap song or the um, whatever, the recreation of it. You can't say this is my shit. You have to give homage to where you found the idea from. And the problem is we have a lot of these people that come over here to America that feel like they don't have to give us a goddamn homage of nothing. They're so disrespectful, y'all. And if y'all don't understand why I say you cannot unify with all these bitches who do not have respect for you, you cannot. Because they're showcasing how they will backstab you the first chance they get. They are indicating to you they don't give no flying fucks about you, your lineage, your past, your struggles, your nothing, your music, even if it benefited them, even if it made them rich. Look at Akon and how he's being disrespectful. Do you think that we should unify with the likes of a bitch like that? Hell no. Hell no. He's predatory. He only wants us to help pay the debt back to China, $1 billion loan that he took from China. And the only reason why he's talking greasy, in my opinion, is because 
he does not have the influence he thought he would have after all this time. He thought that he could just say his name and say a word or two. If we were just going to throw money at him. No, bitch. We don't want you. We, you're not one of us, bitch. We invited you in. You stole our music and you've been disrespectful since you became a superstar. Fuck you, Akon. Fuck everything that you love. I don't give a flying fuck about Senegal. Okay? But you need to worry about paying that goddamn loan back, ho. Okay? Get Dr. Eric Connor, which I do believe that he loaned Dr. Eric Connor half of what he borrowed in hopes to get us to pay that loan back through her. Okay? So they're working side by side with different scams. The ADDI database from Dr. Eric Connor. She's talking about a Wakanda city. That's a con as usual. He's talking about an Akon city. That's a con as usual. He's talking about an Akon coin, which is a con as usual. She's talking about cryptocurrency, which is a con as usual. Every denominator though is African Americans. That, that, that hexed name, African Americans. We need your help. We need you to help us build cities and help our people over to Africa. And guess who has to give up money, though, by their predictions? You. They're not giving up shit. They're accepting your money in their hand. They don't want you to ask no questions about nothing. They just want to talk about black unity. We all black skin. But then when it comes to our history, we ain't shit. When it comes to our music, you didn't make that. When it comes to our dance, you, didn't, you weren't the first. We were there all along with you. Oh, that goes way back to Africa. Bitches. The people came over here, lost everything. And y'all want to play dumb when you already know that we don't speak any other language. We typically don't have no other culture. We had to recreate our own culture, literally. We had to recreate our music literally from nothing. So it does not go back to Africa. Unfortunately for Kat, she really feels like it does. It does not. Sorry. It does not. When I write songs and I hear music, I'm not thinking about Africa. Sorry. Never. Okay. We have abundance of archives of music that says otherwise that has nothing to do with Africa. But now that they're trying to link themselves up to us like predators that they are, now they're saying everything we did. Oh, that's Africa. You hear the drums, right? Bitch. When the slaves were in the cotton fields, they didn't have no drum. They had to hear whatever was on in their mind. The clanking of the chains is the beat they heard. The swinging of the hoe in the field is what they heard. They were aligning themselves with people out in the fields, like hitting the ground with the holes at the same time for the beat that they heard while they sang. That didn't come from Africa. That came from them thinking about how can we make this predicament a lot better while we're out here in this hot ass fucking sun? How can we make it better for our existence as we get, you know, during our day in the heat? and all these things, let's make music, let's sing hymns, let's sing spirituals, let's talk about God, let's talk about our life, let's talk about our struggle. That was not about Africa. So y'all need to stop this lie that's going on in our culture right now. But again, when you have lame black American men, and I hate to say, you know, we have too many of them to count. I'm not saying all. I'm saying that the ones that are most vocal though, on these platforms are the ones that are most effeminate, the ones that are most docile, the ones that have their knee pads ready to hop on the pads and wait to suck any dingling that comes along, okay? As long as they think they get an opportunity for money or pussy, they will do it. And this is what's happening right now. Me speaking the way I'm speaking, people are gonna think I'm rude, but it's not rude of them to try to snatch away our shit though, huh? It's better for them to snatch our shit for me to speak up rudely, though, huh? That's rude. Me speaking boldly and crudely is worst of all. Not the fact that they're deliberately trying to steal our shit. Now, here is an old clip of B.B. King who described the issue that we were having back in the day with white artists stealing our style. 
okay? And he talked about Elvis Presley, and I want you to hear what he had to say. It was very problematic. This happened all the time. They stole our shit. They keep stealing our shit, and we need to stop them now. Come on. A little bit about the people you've known. You knew Elvis yes. before he was big. Yes. And you knew him after he was big. Yes. Tell me about it. Um, Elvis was very shy when I first met him. When I first met him, the Sun Studio, where was it? Sun Studio in Memphis. Mm-hmm. There, uh, uh, Dewey Phillips was a disc jockey, mm-hmm. and his brother Sam Phillips mm-hmm. was on this right. station. So I used to go out to the studio, and my company that I worked for at the time would always contract Mr. Phillips to uh, let us in any time that we had something to record and. Usually Elvis would be there practicing a lot of times. He had several people, but at, at that time, he was a handsome guy, good looking. I didn't think too much about his playing or singing. I mean, he was okay, but I didn't see at that time what I saw later on. But he would talk and he was, you know, interested in your music. He would watch. He didn't ask questions a lot, but he, he would watch. Because a lot of people, when they heard Elvis, thought he was black, didn't they? At first, yes. Yeah, well, a lot of said he was playing that. black music. He's a white guy. Yeah, but see, at first music. he was playing more like rockabilly. He wasn't yeah. really getting into the things that he started to do later. But when he started to do that, then he started turning heads, including mine. Yeah, it did. So yes. what did you see then? I saw became... that he was. He had everything. The looks, yeah, the the talent, and the and rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm he had, soul. Every, had everything. To me, he had everything. You know, you started looking at guys. Kind of like but again, he had everything because he mimicked the black artists previous to him. He should have said that. But again, a lot of black men can't just be so bold to just speak out the truth and say he stole our shit. OK, that would have been too controversial with what was going on around that time. And we have to always tread so lightly. I don't know why he didn't write a book. I don't know why people didn't let that be known a more widespread. But he could have been like, yeah, he was mimicking us and he began sounding like us and he stole from us. But yeah, he was a nice looking guy and he was, you know, more or less learned to be talented behind mimicking us. He should have been able to say that because that's what happened. Handsome, he's tall and he looks good. He can sing, he can play. He got a lot of women. Well, I, I didn't see, uh, you know, I didn't see women disliking him, but he, he was just, I didn't, I didn't see him after them yeah. either. But uh, I guess had I been handsome like that, I probably would have. Okay, so you see how problematic it is, though, that when our men speak, they really have to be careful. And um, that seems to be the going theme that I'm finding even more. Um, they're not speaking at all. I mean, we do now have more people speaking, I'll say. But I'm saying the ones that are on the panels, the ones that are intermingling with other cultures are tapping out and going ahead and saying the most ridiculous thing like this is comes from Africa or this is all our music and all this bullshit when it's not. Give credit where credit is due. This is our shit. Now, here is B.B. King, the great. When he plays one of his famous songs, The Thrill is Gone. This, of course, is my favorite song by B.B. King. Check it out. Just in case it's copywritten, I'm going to stop it briefly. 
again, this is the great B.B. King. So many people try to mimic his blues style, but there's no comparison to the original. Of course, blues went back further than him, um, and he learned it from those greats. And then also he learned from the spirituals. He learned from the gospel. He le learned from blues. He learned from folk music. He learned from country. He learned, and again, once he learned the basics of the house that was built by us, then he went back and, and added his own flair and his own style on top of that. But he would have to always give homage to where he heard that from first. That's what he would have to do. But here he is. Listen to him. Now, interesting enough, <clears throat> he did this song, The Thrill is Gone in Africa, 1974, okay? So the inspiration didn't come from Africa. He brought the inspiration to Africa. It's the other way around. Get it right. He went to Africa in 1974. Who do you think influenced Africa with this style of music? He did, Okay. This is him in concert in Africa, 1974. Who influenced who? Huh? Did this style of music get influenced by Africa? Or did he influence the Africans listening in the audience, his music? Okay? We gotta stop these motherfuckers from lying. I know you're listening, professor. The Puerto Rican professor, I forgot your name. Did you say your name was uh, Derek? Daryl, one of them. Anyways, we influenced Africa, not the other way around. I know it's hard to believe that our wretchedness of our history would be so great global, but we were and we are. The Africans learned from our style of music to create and, and mimic us and do their own thing, but they had the foundation from our shit first, not the other way around. We didn't have drums. We weren't dancing in the dirt like that. We weren't doing all those things like that. The music that we developed came from our head, came from our spirit, came from our heart, came from our struggle, came from our hope, hope came from our pain, not the other way around. Africans learned off of us, okay? Get that shit correct, okay?
Africans didn't know what bands were. They didn't know how to pay, play different instrumentals together. They might have had an instrument. They had their drums. They didn't know how to compose music. They didn't know what a structured band was like. They did not know. They learned it from us. Okay? So stop letting these lying ass, cultured list motherfuckers tell you different. Okay? Where exactly is the influence there from Africa? Can someone tell me? Nowhere. Stop lying. Now, since um, BB, the BB King was so influential and went to Africa, you know, there was a jazz musician by the name of Jonathan Butler that did influence me from South Africa. And I want to play a clip of how he was. He was a wonderful guitarist, but again, he studied our music to become a great guitarist. I don't know if you guys know who Jonathan Butler is. I'm going to play one of his famous tracks that I'm sure that you guys might have heard. Maybe you didn't know who he was. Let me find a song by him and see if you guys know and remember. But Jonathan Butler was a South African, a very wonderful guitarist that actually influenced my style of music. Not the first style of music from him. I mean, I was listening to American styles first. And then I came across him later in life. And I was like, oh, my God, who is this guitarist? I was like, wow, who is this guitarist? So let me play one of those first. Jonathan Butler. Just to give you a, a sample of how we affected other artists around the globe that now can give homage to us, unfortunately, um, I'm pretty sure he would give homage because he's a gospel singer now. He loves God. He knows God. And, um, you know, I don't I don't I wouldn't see foresee him ever trying to pull that card. But, you know, the people that are in America in particular and the ones that are online lying that are Pan-Africans, those are the ones that are trying to assign our music, our style everything about us to Africa and think that that shit is cute to do. Like we aren't supposed to have a problem with that. Like, are you kidding me? But this is one of Jonathan Butler's famous songs. Let me see the name of this. If you guys recall, is called lies. Okay. And um, this is one of the first hits that he came out with back in the, uh, I think in the eighties, like 84, 85, something like that.
So that song did influence me. That album actually was one of the best albums that I had heard from any musician in Africa, South Africa ever. But again, you heard him. Well, well, I mean, he was doing the same thing that B.B. King does because he was watching and emulating what he heard. So it's okay to give homage to where that's that came from. It would be very disrespectful to get all that knowledge from somebody and pretend like you never, ever got that knowledge from somebody. And that's exactly what is happening. Now, I want to play a sample of different songs over time that used James Brown uh, beats, his style of music, and how it, it kind of, what do you call it, transformed into other styles and other songs you'll see and hear how it happened through this video right here. If you guys haven't yet, please do me a favor by liking and sharing the video. Also subscribe to my channel. And after I do this, I'm going to go to the chat room and see who's all there. Thank you for all appearing. Let's go. Now look at this. It said song Afro Rican, give it all you got doggy style in 1987, but they got that song style before through James Brown. Listen to it again. This is 1962, y'all. James Brown, The Night Train, 1962, and someone bit off of his style later. So 1987, this Afro Rican, give it all you got, 1987, called it give it all you got, but he got that shit from James Brown. He can't say, I created that music. You can't say it. You got to say, I got this from James Brown beat, and I kind of flipped it and added my own version of it. I got the idea from how I added my own version from James Brown. You can't skip the truth. You see how universal James Brown's beats were and how so many artists benefited off of his past collection, archived music. You cannot skip the foundation of what you learned from. You might have made a song that sounded really good, but you got to give homage to where you got the idea from to begin with. You can't just say I created it from nothing because you're a lie. OK, so thank you all for appearing. Let me see what you guys are saying real quick. Hi, Mary Lee, for appearing. I greatly appreciate you. You said I didn't know he was African. No, he's not African. I'm, I, oh, you're talking about um, Jonathan Butler? No, he's from I guess he's I guess he calls himself African from South Africa, I guess. 
But you said didn't know he was African. Not many Africans would have been listening to that kind of music in the 60s and 70s. That's what made him so unique, Mary Lee. And you said in the audiences, the audiences at those South African conference con concerts were white. Primarily, yes. But I don't know if he was um, biracial or not because he's really fair lightly. I mean, he's light skinned. I don't know. I didn't really look up his history before. I just know that he is a famous South African guitarist. And that's why I liked him because I was really into jazz in the 80s. And so I listened to a lot of jazz back in the 80s. And I just so happened to look up to um, a Jonathan Butler. I heard that song Lies and then I followed you know, other songs by him. I think that was the first tape that I ever bought that was from a South African ever. I've never, ever from the, at that point on, never, ever went back to Africa for any type of um, uh, contribution to my style of music because there's no comparison to no other style. And again, Jonathan Butler got it from our artists first. Okay. Freeman, apparently a uh, Freeman Holocaust survivor got mad because I played Jonathan Butler. Look, um, I'm showcasing how music uh, motivates and inspires different people, including me. I don't mind giving homage to a South African Jonathan Butler. That's not changing the narrative that everything that was learned in the beginning comes from America, from our people. He learned from our people. And I went and learned from him after learning from my people. It helped me more understand style style singing and made me understand more of uh, appreciate jazz better, I guess you could say when hearing Jonathan Butler. But yeah, that's that's what I did. How you doing, X Trap Rebel? Thank you for coming back. I really appreciate you. Um, and T, thank you again for appearing. I really appreciate you. Uh, Shani Blake, hi, how you doing? And you said said he'll go on global tour to pay back the investors. Again, he's been talking to us for at least three years about his fucking fake ass Akon City since before the um, coronavirus hit. And we weren't taking a bite over his bullshit. We were ignoring his ass. We were not paying him no, no, never mind. Then he talked about a coin. We weren't paying him no, never mind. And he's again pissed. You also said that he's discovering his a coin in town is a scam. Yeah, he's right now going through some legal issues involving his, I guess, city and the coin. Someone accused him of uh, scamming and all that kind of stuff. But that debt of him taking that $1 billion from the Chinese people, he still got to pay that back. Why don't Akon contact all the Africans such as Aphrodamus and Judea Empire and Tunija and all these other Africans about helping to build his city? No, he skips over them and comes directly to us. Like he thinks we're supposed to be his bitches and hoes to be debt slaves for his idea. No, ho, you're not our people. We're not gonna be indebted to your bullshit, your bullshit scam. And that's why he's pissed. He did not imagine that we would not care about him like that. Even though he's been screaming to the mountains how he made all these lights and how he's doing the good work for his people. Congratulations, you ought to, okay? You became a millionaire in America Take that money back to Africa already. You're supposed to. But what's that got to do with black Americans, though? That's not where we're from. Those are not our people. It is not our responsibility. OK, and he's mad. So that's why he comes up with these controversial, stupid um, comments that was not provoked. He just came up out the blue talking shit because he always has us on his mind. He always has us on his mind. It's like, dude, you can, you have a big platform. You have a big microphone. You can say all Africans globally contribute a dollar and help me with this Akon city. Why hasn't he done that? Why has he skipped those people and come straight to black Americans, though? Because he thinks we're bitches and hoes and debt slaves for him. And that's what I've been warning y'all back uh, 
warning y'all about when my last channel before it was taken down, I showed you all the scams and how they've been running game. I showed you everything, but let's get now to dance a little bit of a break. And then I'll go back to black skin is amazing so that you can hear what I did to them on the platform. Let's go. Break dancing before it was break dancing. We did it first. That's not true though, Mary Lee. We're not the only ones with money. All the Africans that are like in the UK and the United States is doing better than black Americans. That's common people around in America. They're doing better than us. They got their money stored away. Swiss banks, France, America. Tap them on the shoulder, those doctors, those lawyers, all these other motherfuckers that's been here for decades. They got money. That's not our responsibility. It's their responsibility. They got money, just like Akon. Tap their shoulder. Leave us alone. So people watch little programs like that, that came over here and they got inspired to do other types of dance. That's what happened. That's what they did. Okay. Not the other way around. And again, we created that music from nothing by just, you know, having our spare time, you know, to try to unwind from all this, the, the pressures of being ignored and being disrespected we were like, you know, trying to make up stuff to have fun with, to have escapism on. And so we did those types of things that, you know, created the dance, um, created pre-music, created music, created everything that everyone throughout all this time, since we developed the beginning of our hymns and spirituals, they've been watching and mimicking us and copying us, everybody everybody. You hear me? Everybody. So that was the Berry Brothers. Okay. I'm going to find a newer um, dance of, of theirs. Okay. So you guys can see how they cleaned up their, their um, act once they got discovered kind of. Okay. And then they started traveling and doing other types of music and other types of um, dance like tap dancing apparently. And again, that is our style of music. We came out with tap dance. We came out with flips and all that while dancing and everybody started emulating us. And of course, other people now can do all those types of dance now, but they had to learn it from somewhere else first and they learned it from us. Okay.
the other film that I showed before before that one, they said it was copywritten. So I'm gonna be very careful in playing too much of that type of vintage uh, video. But you can see 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 the progression of the dance. And by the way, for fair use, for entertainment purposes and educational purposes as well. I hope you two would allow me to showcase these videos to show proof that our music and our style of dancing came from us from nothing. There was no influence from Africa. Yes, people need to stop Africanizing us. That's very disrespectful. Okay, just because we survived and somewhat thrived some, you know, certain pockets of America. It's offensive to just try to snatch away and say that's not your shit when you didn't help us make the dance. You didn't help us with the music. You didn't help us with the song. You didn't help us with the styles. Africa didn't have no influence to us. We had our own beat in our own heart and our own mind. Of course, we have soul. It's in our DNA. Of course, we're very expressive people. Of course, that's why we do a lot of talking now. That's why we express ourselves very well. Um, and we keep expressing ourselves. Unfortunately, now it's not expressing the way that I would like it to go. We have too many men that feel like they don't need to protect what is ours. They need to, you know, share our accomplishments with everybody else who's trying to rob from us. They're bankrupting us. And Pan-Africans are having that happen better. They're like, oh, never mind. We're all one people. These people don't look at you that way, though. They don't and they won't and they shouldn't. And I don't. OK, and I'm not ashamed to say I don't look at myself as an African. I do not. I look at myself as a full fledged American. I'm not going to change my colors because you done showed up in America talking about we all one and the same. No, please stay out of my face with that nonsense. It's pretty ridiculous. So now I'm going to go back to Black Skin is Amazing, where I again had to get on this so-called Puerto Rican professor. And I'm going to show you how I ended it because I went in in the last 10 minutes, which is about to come up where I, I just took off the gloves. I didn't have no more patience. And I just went in. Okay. B-boys, any historian who is a pioneer will tell you that. And they are well, would there be any of it? Would there be any any rap, hip hop, any of that if it hadn't have been for the for the foundation of FBA music? You couldn't have done it without James Brown. You couldn't have done it without you know. Let me but let me ask you a question, Shani. But was it only James Brown? That's what I want to know. Was it only? Was that the only sound that they used? No, no, So, no, you know, no. so Professor, we, 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 we covered this already. Fun, soul, blues, jazz, disco, so this story was rock, right? The, but she wasn't on the live, Kevin. That, uh, okay, I got it, but I just, 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 just to clarify, yeah, the, the we types of music, it, but she wasn't there. soul, blues, jazz, some disco, and a little bit of rock and roll. No, no, Man. brother, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 why are you saying that? You see what you're doing? You're eliminating. Eliminating what? Disco. Some, it's not some disco. It, it's not all funk. It's not all jazz. It's not There's all a combination funk. of all those different types of music, yeah. though. Okay, no, you don't know what you're talking about, about bro. No, 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 no Professor. Okay, Literally, that's the music that, that was music. That, that is the music. Tell me the songs. No, 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 stop. Tell me the songs, Kevin. See, what he likes to do is he likes to ask some abstract fire question, hoping that your memory fails you, knowing that you're not prepared. A lot of us don't have good short-term memories. And he wants you to either say it or forget it. It's like, bitch, you don't, you don't get to regulate how this goes. I'm going to go where I am, showcase what I know, and then get back to me about showcasing what songs it was and this and that and the other. I get back to you. It's not the other way around. You don't dictate nothing. You don't re uh, regulate anything. Okay, and so I did not allow him to do that to me. Let's go. Yeah, and Philadelphia sound and Motown. And what was going on with, with Barry White? Where, I'm, uh, I'm Barry asking White, a simple question. The, I'm asking a simple what? question. That what were the break that, beats? That, You're not listening, Shannon. Yeah. I'm asking a simple question. What were the break beats that the DJs used? Name those records. And don't just tell me James Brown. 
Wait, well, I'm sorry, but Don, uh, uh, this donkey is more uh, commonly known as the DJ, is a person who recorded music for an audience. So without the music, you cannot have a DJ. You keep talking about the DJ as being a creator, but they needed the music to even play. You lost. Yeah, so, uh, so Professor, I'm trying to understand why you need to get down in the weeds on I just named like five different types of music. It's all black American music. That, that's, so you, that's you, you told me we got to get down into the weeds on, like, that's your you know, point. the specific that's break beats. Kind of very few people actually mean, know that. Bro. That's very, the like, only you know that, but very few people actually know that. And people, 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 when, people, when people are talking about that, when people are having this conversation, they're not going to get down into the, the weeds on stuff like that. It's that's go, the look, problem. These are the, these, the, these the, are the five, these, these are five or six types of you black American music that actually relates to the genre. You are wrong. You're not right. You're wrong. Okay, see, uh, you're wrong, Kevin. You're wrong. Okay, so we got we got a lot of folks talking over each other, but we 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 had had a pretty good we had had a pretty good discussion. We had a pretty good discussion, and we we actually covered this. And you didn't you didn't you didn't make a big deal about the fact when I was naming all those different types of music. That was a black that's black American music. It's not. It wasn't. It wasn't salsa. It wasn't mambo. It wasn't merengue. It wasn't. I said that. I said okay, it wasn't yeah, that. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we talked about that. Yeah. So I don't know why you sound wrong. I'm not. I'm not tracking. Let me tell you what it was. I already told you what it was. It was funk. It was R and B. It was jazz. It was disco. It was uh, Caribbean breaks. It was salsa breaks. These are these are from the DJs who are telling you the records that they use. This is from Herc. Bambada, Flash, Theodore, Mario, these are the DJs. Baron, these are the breakbeat DJs. Those are the sounds that they use, and they will tell you out of their own mouth, they did not only play funk music. They played a plethora of different styles that were from white boys, rock groups, white rock groups, German groups, as long as it Speaking of rock, uh, rock, again... Rock started with black Americans. You cannot get around it. And the white people emulated our rock, you know, legends. That's what happened. They, again, added other things later to it, other vibrations to it. But they learned the basics from the house that was already built by black Americans. You cannot get around it. They keep trying. Here is the renowned, late, great sister, Rosetta Tharp. Didn't it rain, children? I want to play again a snippet of this. I might not be able to play the whole thing because it's vintage. Um, I think that this was, I don't know if it says the year. It's not saying the year, but obviously it has to be around... um, 30s or 40s or I don't know but it's really really old pay attention y'all this is a treat right here fair use of all videos Oh, my God. 
that was the origins of rock and roll. Nobody gets credit but us. We got to stop allowing simp as Negroes that are Pan Africans or simp as men who don't want to stand in their square and represent our culture because they want pussy so much. And I'm not being funny. I'm telling you the way I truly feel about it. So let's go back again to this lying Puerto Rican professor. Tell us how we should look at our history because he is a is subscribed himself to being labeled. I'm a professor. Listen to me, little blackies. I'll tell you your history. I got a degree. You ain't got a degree. Listen to me. Ugh. No, no, bitch. It was funk. It was r and It was jazz. It was disco. It was uh, Caribbean breaks. It was salsa breaks. These are, these are from the DJs who are telling you the records that they use. This is from Herc, Bambada, Flash, Theodore, Mario. These are the DJs. Baron. These are the breakbeat DJs. Those are the sounds that they use, and they will tell you out of their own mouth they did not only play funk music. They played a plethora of different styles that were from white boys, rock groups, white rock groups, German groups, as long as it had a break in it. That's all they cared about. You're trying to say it comes from only Sly and the Family Stone, Yes, some of it does, but it wasn't the whole library. Why would, okay, let me ask you this, Professor. Why would black people be dancing to some European rock song? Because it's the, you're not listening. It's the break in the song. If it had a funky break, which they Got did, it. that's what they chose, the breaks. Okay, I mean, but now, but now when, you, when you're talking about this collectively, when you're talking about with this collectively with black people in general, they're not going to mention anything about some European rock song. Because they don't know. Well, they I mean, they don't, they, don't, they, don't have, they don't have to know that. They, they don't know hip-hop. They, they don't we have to know that. We created rock song. We created country, though. We That's created it. jazz, folk, visual, gospel, rap. We created everything. You keep on trying to recreate what we created. I didn't it's say we created it. Can you tell me? Oh, well, not, when I say we, I'm not talking about you, uh, okay? I'm talking about black Americans. Can you can you tell me what this song came from right here? Lord, I ask Talk about, bro, you're not listening. 
The only people that will not get in the weeds are people who, who are not from New York City, who never went to these parties. The people who went to these parties know these records. And I get that, but why do you, why you, say, why you say people got to know, like, every little detail when the general information is good enough? Like, for, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. So when, this, so when this thing first started with, you know, uh, Fat Joe and, and uh, who is it, uh, uh, Buster Rhymes, yeah, saying all this stuff, so when, they, when they first started with all of this stuff and they were talking this, I asked somebody who was just, you know, you know, somebody in the family, I just asked to say, hey, you know, you're not a hip-hop head, but you understand you know, enough about rap music, the culture, and everything else, without even naming all the elements and all this other stuff and everything else. And one of his basic questions to me, and I said, you know, do you know that uh, Buster Ron is running around here saying that they created 90% of, of uh, hip-hop culture and the music and everything else? And his response to me, his, he, actually, he actually responded to me with a, with a question. Well, if they created it, then where's the influence in their culture? And where's the proof and the evidence that they actually did that? It's not influenced from our culture. It's influenced from Bronx culture. It's a Bronx culture. But you it's see how much of it is so much black American, though. And Brother, what, you... what are you talking about? The Bronx had blacks and Puerto Ricans in high numbers in the 70s. I get all of that. But... Okay, so yeah, so you, I, think, I, think, I think the sticking point is that you're trying to say, it, it's like, it, here's, what you, it, here's what it sounds like you're trying to say. It sounds like you're trying to say that Black people were somehow influenced by the fact that you know Puerto Ricans and and were there, and 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 that's not the that's not the case. It was literally the other way around. What are you talking about, black? I'm trying to say black people were influenced by the fact Puerto Ricans were there. What it sounds like that's what you're trying to say. What are you talking about? I don't even know what that that makes. Because, sense. because okay, so because you keep saying because you keep okay, you keep a certain uh, the Latinos into it, right? And I'm not throwing anybody into it. We were there, bro. We we were there and active. Day one. You can't. Right. That's history. That's the history. You can't. You, you want to run you, for the you, history. You, no, no, no. But you, see, but you see how muddled it is 50 years later when nobody knows only the only, the only Latino that anybody knows about is a handful of DJs and and, a, and one break dancer. What are you talking about? What That's, that's what you know. This is what I mean. People talk about hip hop culture, and all they know is one break dancer, Crazy Legs. Here's the break. Here's the break right here. This shows me. You're not doing your homework. 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 you that they listen to to hear the break, to begin with, to get the idea from us, like we said. And he was trying to hurry up and camouflage my voice, but I was not having none of it. This is how you handle these liars. Watch me. This is what I mean. People talk about hip hop culture, and all they know is one break dancer, Crazy Legs. Here's the break. Here's the break right here. This shows me. You're not doing your homework.
All the sampling that you guys did was the music that we had previous to. Who were the okay? DJs? I'm trying. Mr. I don't Man care about the DJs. DJs. Who gives a flying fuck about DJs? They're the oh, last. Man? They're the last leg of this run. We're talking about all the history of America. Without the music, there ain't no DJ. There's no need for DJ. So what are you talking about? Who is the DJ? Stop running. I you don't know. care about DJs. I care about the music. You don't know. That's I why. care about the music more than DJs. I'll tell you that. Who gives a flying fuck about DJs? Tell me the, the music. The music is the oh. most important component in this whole conversation. Tell That's the part the you're missing. DJ. Tell me the DJs, the music that the DJs are trash. In comparison to the music. The DJ okay. is fast. What, did what would you choose if you had to be on an island by yourself? Would you, choose to, would you choose to be with a DJ or would you choose to have music with you there on the island? The you would not want that DJ nowhere near you. You would want the goddamn music. Tell me okay, so flash. stop lying. What did Flash play? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? The music there is. You need to, you need to leave this. The music previous to this DJ is no more important than him. I don't care about no man talking about DJing with his Kango hat to the side and big ass glasses. Who gives a flying fuck? I care about the music prior to that motherfucker. Because you don't know hip hop. I don't care no the DJ. The DJ plays the music. I care about the music. Again, he lost the debate when I brought out. If you're on an island alone, would you want a DJ there without the music? Or would you want the music brought to the island or a band or the people that played the music? He got clowned right there. He lost the debate right there. You cannot get back from that, but he tried, okay? Then I sealed the deal after this. Watch this. The DJ played the music. Oh, and, and, and he, he, needed, he needed the music to even exist, so he that, don't matter. And it comes from Africa, so what's the so, point? No, who gives a fuck about Africa? Because when we were here, we were singing our own songs, and Africa was not thought about here. So stop it. Girl, That's what I mean about allowing you, you to come to America. You want to bring up and big up Africa and forget about the American people that was discarded and sold away to America and they had to reinvent themselves. You're going to try to tell us that we need to give homage to Africa? No, Africa. You hear me? Africa. And we I care about America. Look, Africa. Africa, right? Africa didn't create our music. Do you hear the Africans? Do you hear the Africans created our music? No, we created our music. You bumped your head. Africa does not exist in my mind. America only matters. Stop it. The drum comes from Africa, girl. Who cares? Did they make everything else that was created? Who cares? Who did they create everything else? That's the problem. Who cares? I still had a beat in my heart. I didn't think about Africa when I write songs. Who cares? You're sad. You know that? No, you're sad because you're trying to dictate to me what I fucking should care about. Who are you to tell me what to care about? You ain't nobody to me. You don't know hip-hop. You're nobody to me, dude. You don't know hip-hop. You're not me, dude. You don't know my struggle, dude. If you want to give homage to Africa, then you get a knee pad and you get homage to Africa. You don't know my struggle, dude. If you want to give homage to Africa, then you get a knee pad and give homage. I'm not going to be there with you. We're talking about hip-hop. I'm talking about music. I'm talking about music too. What were the records that the DJs play? I don't care about Africa. Uh, Africa, Africa when it comes to our history here in America, because when we were discarded, okay, and we had to reinvent ourselves, when we had to reinvent ourselves, Africa wasn't there. So stop trying to reincorporate Africa in this conversation when they weren't existing in this conversation. We reinvented ourselves. And we picked ourselves up and recreated a culture from nothing. And you want to talk about Africa? Take your ass to Africa, man. You where you going? You ain't going. You ain't left. You ain't leaving. You liar. Your racism precedes you. No, you're a liar, and I'm not having it. I'm asking you a question since you know hip hop so well. I just told you the most important part of this conversation. I'm going to reiterate again you're and over and over again. The culture. So tell me that we need created from the spirituals and every other genre is the thing that black Americans collectively made. That's the only thing that matters. All this other conversation trying to bring up Africa after the fact is fucking felonious. 
is disrespectful. Let me understand and, something. And Let me when they come here, like Akon, talking about their better performance, do you think Akon's thinking about, Akon about do you think saying. that Akon is equivalenting our music to their music? He's Listen not. Sandy, can I get Sandy back on here? You need to go somewhere. Okay, well, you need to understand that I'm not weakling like the others that will follow, and I will not let you get away with bullshit, period. I'm going to go right now. But I'm about to go back because my phone's almost charged. You go ahead and ramble all you want right now. Everybody knows that the music is what black Americans made. Fuck Africa. Fuck you. Fuck all the other bullshit that you bring up thereafter. You don't matter. Bye-bye. Okay? That's how you handle liars, y'all. Where are all the men standing in the square like that? And like I said, these videos, I'm giving permission to Black Skin is Amazing. He can reuse my videos. He can have me on to address this better. Um, but in any event, I am not going to let someone dictate to me how I'm supposed to feel about my culture and my music. Africa is not on my mind. They have nothing to do with our style of music. Stop trying to give them homage when they did not earn it. They didn't earn it. It's not their shit. Okay. So let me go back to the chat room. You said <laughs> X trap rebel says Akon needs to go back to Senegal. Yeah. After all this talk about, we ought to go to Africa. We're scared of Africa. Africa is much better in America, but his bitch ass ain't in, in Senegal. He's not in Africa, but he's steadily talking this bullshit to us again. They're trying to switch us out for them to replace us. It's called the switcheroo game that they're playing. Pan-Africans are trying to enable us to be the status in the situations that they deal with in Africa. They want that, our, they want that to be our problem. And they want to come here and live a better life off of our back and struggle and deaths and call themselves American and tell us, don't call yourself American. You're African. And they want to come here and become black Americans. They want to say, we're the African American. We're the pure African Americans. Bitch, the fuck you talking about? Okay, so Easy X reco <clears throat> Recovering Pan African. Thank you for appearing. You said greetings, sis. Happy New Year, everyone. Exactly. Happy New Year. Peace to the chat. Can't believe. More than a handful of black Americans agree with that shit. Akon, stupid. These Pan-Africans always capitulate to these dusties. Exactly. Um, and yes, people need to stop trying to Africanize us. They act like they're supposed to be a blessing and something that we're supposed to long for. No, you're you're rob you're robbing our our, our, our heritage. You're robbing our our ethnicity. You are trying to re uh define who we're supposed to perceive ourselves as being and you're you're blatantly being disrespectful because you didn't care to know what we think you didn't care to know what we describe ourselves as you're trying to label me with a title i didn't give myself who are you any of y'all to try to tell me who the fuck i am i'm telling you who the fuck i am i'm an american that's it i don't care about the past if i have one ancestor that got tricked onto the boat, who got sold or whatever. I am that, I am that ancestor. I am all my ancestors. Irregardless if they're white, Indian, or from Africa. I am that ancestor. I embody those ancestors. I don't need to pretend to be renewed to feel better about myself. That's what bitch ass niggas are doing who are trying to get women and they have to put on a different hat, rock a daishiki, rock the green, red, and black and pretend to be something that they're, they're not. They'll never be. But they're trying to wear this new identity so they hope to get new pussy. It's what it is. And they're selling us out for their dicks. You, you hear me? You feel me? No, Puerto Ricans had nothing to do with hip hop facts. You said these people need to stop trying to claim themselves in hip hop facts. You also said that the mayor in New York, Eric Adams, was saying he's African and that U.S. is ran by Africans. I was like, M -L 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 -M -A -L. he was sucking African D big time. Exactly. That's what I don't like about these men. Every chance they get, 
they get on their knee pads and they suck off any African. And those same Africans are talking behind his back about how dumb he is, how much of a slave bitch boy he is while he's over there sucking. It's sad, really. He, you said that he he a fucking fool now. People people looking at us crazy. Exactly. But this is a mayor, a man that's supposed to be a leader. He should be like, this is black American music. This is our shit. This is our heritage. This is our legacy. Now he wants to bring in Africa and talk about we're supposed to reference Africans now. What the fuck's going on? Again, they sold us out a long time ago. I'm going to tell you who they are. Boule, Freemasonry, Black Bitches, the Black Caucus sold us out. The Africans and all the immigrants that come over here trying to tell you that you got to be African while they're trying to be an American. All those motherfucking factors is what got us confused about who we are. Instead of these men standing up and saying, hold up, y'all. We're just Americans. Stop with all this imposement. Stop trying to force another identity on us. We've been having this happen to us repetitiously throughout our history here in America. We're going to name ourselves this time. So just stay out of our faces and stay out of our business. Why can't they just say that? No, that is too divisive. What's so divisive about us claiming to be who we are? When they come over here and say, I'm a Haitian, I'm a Jamaican, I'm from Nigeria, I'm a Nigerian. Is that divisive? So why is it divisive for me to say I'm just an American? I've been an American all this time prior to your bitch ass coming to America. So I have to now consider you because you showed up. Fuck out of my face. If you don't like it, stay clear of me. Okay, because you're going to get the truth from me. I'm not going to be waffling like bitches do or bitch ass niggas do. I'm not going to be doing none of that. And I know it hurts y'all when I go as hard as I do because you never heard. Well, I'm sure you have heard other black American women because we are we don't have no chill. Because we had to speak up because the men are not speaking. You get it? If the men were vocal, if they were strong. If they talked like I did, I would not have to. I would not have to go and cut them out of the line. I had to push them out the line and say, you're not leading no more, bitch. My turn. That's what I'm doing right now. And I pushed them out the fucking line and put them in the back and told them to sit their bitch ass down. And here's a binky, bitch. <laughs> Africans want us to have hardships like that. Exactly. They want to call it the reset they want to do. They want all black people to share the same problems collectively. But their ancestors did not do what we did here in America. Why would we want to scratch what our ancestors died over to reset to nothing? No one else would do that. No one else would ever ask no other people to do that. They're asking us to do that, though. And they're calling that shit Pan-Africanism. That's why we have a problem, y'all. That's why we are in trouble now. And I wish to God that I would not have to cuss and scream and yell and be so crude and rude. It's not my personality to be like this. But now I'm here. So I'm going to have to work it out. You also said, Auntie, I'm American, and so are my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on. He could kiss my whole entire ass cheeks. Exactly. Well, I don't want him kissing it. I just want him to walk on by. <laughs> that, Like that song says, walk on by. You also said, Easy Acts Recovering Pan-African. You're naming names, sis. I keep telling people this by design. Pan-Africanism has been compromised and infiltrated by white supremacy along with black collaborators on the continent and here within our midst. Exactly. They are circling us. They are, they're triple teaming us to be fair. And they're trying to submit us into believing this notion that we're now African. It's like, bitch, we went through so many name changes. I'll be damned if I let you rename me a foreigner name me fuck out of here. 
No. I'm not accepting a foreigner coming to America, assuming my identity, and then trying to rename me and boot me from what my ancestors accomplished in America. Fuck out of here. So Easy X, recovering Pan-African, also says, needless to say, when I bring this up, I'm ostracized and I'm not very popular among PA circles. And you won't be. But the thing is, if we did not show up and show out in the chat rooms or go on the platforms at all, you will only hear the likes of Brandon. You will only hear the likes of Afro Think Tank. You will only hear the likes of African um, raf- uh, rifle man, the bitch ass with the big ass musty mustache. You would only hear um, the likes of two, uh, not two Naja, but uh, Dinah Tamir and other Pan Africans who are constantly saying the same parroting messaging over and over and over and over again. And people would assume that that's the way we think. And it's not the truth. We're not speaking because most of us don't care to even bother to fuck with the the conversation because we really don't care about Africa or anything pertaining to Pan-Africanism. But these same parroting bitches are always vocal on platform for hours, repetitiously speaking the same nonsense. So I have had to go to those spaces to let them know that they ain't it. They do not represent black Americans that are indigenous to America. The primary ones that are speaking on our behalf are bitches. They're sellouts. They're coons. They tapped out. They got knee pads. They're waiting to suck any dick and get any money or any recognition for a chance for a name or to get some new pussy. That's why you cannot leave it in the hands of these Pan-Africans because they will let you down. They are selling us out. And they're calling that shit unity. Once we're bankrupt with nothing at all, once we're all homeless, they will be happy as a goddamn lark. They'll be happy. Everybody be happy. And we won't have nothing. That's why I cannot stand not no Pan-African. And you will hear my vitriol when they're in my presence because I know what they're up to and I don't like it. You said they really hate the United States, but none of them leave. Exactly. I have my problems with U.S. too, but I will continue to fight this government and not run away. Exactly. To go elsewhere with no coverage at all. The governments are far worse over there. Their military and their police just kill randomly. They do whatever the fuck they want to do. No one can check and balance them at all. You're just dead or in jail with nothing to show for. I'm not giving up my status here as an American to take an uncertain leap of faith where those people are not trustworthy to begin with. If they were trustworthy, then the Africans would still be in Africa there. They're leaving in droves. They're dying in the Mediterranean. They're dying in ships or uh, when the ships wreck or collapse. They're dying all over the place. There is no reason for me to put faith in that. But you have Pan-Africanism want to compare what's going on to our situation here in America to Africa? Excuse me? Have you bumped your head? Just because you can tour, just because you can visit for two weeks, you're comparing a life in Africa? Are you insane? That's why you can't leave it to these effeminate ass men who are claiming to be leaders, why can't they get their subscribers to do something with what they're talking on? They have so many subscribers. Why can't you raise $500 to do a project here and there? No, because they don't want their money to go towards Africa. They want the money to go towards them. Okay. Okay. That's the hustle. They talk about Africa and people that want you to keep talking about Africa gives donations to the pan-African, pandaling ass, panhandling ass, pan-African lying ass bitches. And while they're collecting this money, they're selling us out. They're encouraged to keep speaking the same way over and 
over and over again. That's why my channel is very, very important. I, I wish to goodness my, goodness my other channel did not get canceled. I had so much material, but I remember a lot. I remember so much. So it doesn't really matter because I can recall a lot. That wasn't that long ago. Okay, you also said Easy X, Recovering Pan-African. Before, when I was a Pan-African, I was attracted to the militancy of it. That changed over the years. These niggas became soft, only wanting to go there and plant tomatoes and grow banana trees. <laughs> and also find a woman there and wives there. Their fantasy of trying to have more than one wife. And they're selling us out. For the dream of having that type of lifestyle, a dream, not reality, a dream, an imagination, a fantasy. OK, they're selling us out for a fantasy. You also said I can plant trees and grow vegetables here. Exactly. And my thing is this. If you have not done nothing here in America, how can we trust you there with money over there in Africa? You have to show and prove that you're responsible enough to, to handle money here in America and so that we can visibly see what you have produced here. We can physically and, you know, see what you are building. If you can't prove it here, there's no point in trusting you over there with the proof. Why? You skipped us first. Why would we put trust in you? Okay. So let me go to where I was earlier when Mike was letting it be known to African um, rifleman that he knows the gig is up, that he knows that he's a sellout, and how I went up there and dragged the living shit out of his ass. They took that live down. I went in, y'all. I went in. Now, this goes to uh, Kanzarian Empire, and I'm going to play some more of that. Um, where he got called out and he wasn't too happy, but oh, well, he's weak. He doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's listen to more of this. Fair use of video, by the way, please, if you have not yet, please like and share the video. Um, subscribe to my channel so I can do more of this type of material content. Let's go. Get the fuck out of here, man. Yo, women don't dick, do. Every time I sit down with black Americans, y'all shit is said by you guys, man. Why like, you don't respect you guys? Get the fuck out of here, man. You, you don't like Liberians, man. You just went there to get a wife, man. You come here to talk game, how you want to build Liberian infrastructure? All you do, all you feel is good to get a wife. Get the fuck out of here. Mike, you just angry, dude. But she's a big girl, Mike. Big girl's a big girl. The one that gave y'all love that night. She's a big girl. Yo, know, I, I like to try white girls. White girls don't even fuck with you no more. Uh, 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 Mike, see, you just, you just a troll. <laughs> just a damn troll. You know, the thing about it is, like I said, go, go I don't down. get a white girl, man. I fucked up. You smoke the you train. You go all over to like damn village. When, when, when the Chinese man steps all over Nigeria, I want you to have that smoke. I'd rather have a Chinese man in Nigeria than have you dust this, man. You dumb motherfucker. Oh, see, there you go. Are you you Chinese man's going there really, 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 that's a fucking crying shame. And he's chubby. And he got a big ass rock waller head. Both of them. They are not attractive. They don't get women. Women don't respect them. They sound too weak and too soft. We don't want that bullshit. We don't want nobody trying to kill us and stuff. But we don't want no weak, effeminate type of man that's hella bendable. That's willing to suck off anything for a chance to get closer to a woman that they can't find. They're too fucking weak. Look at how these men calling themselves representing us on all these different platforms. That's why I went up there and Kala, you soon enough this year, you're going to get my wrath because I've been wanting to get I've been wanting to catch up with you. I just haven't had the appropriate time to get that ass. But I'm coming, Kala. 2023, you will be hearing from me. <laughs> oh. 
point why can't they show something why can't they collaborate to get a parcel of land here build something make a lounge a lot what do you call it uh one of those loud lounge log, log log houses or something like that like a camp area for them to get to and build stuff on and plan with and this and that why can't they do that here first why can't they let like a headquarter spot where they 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 put their money towards a land a piece of land here, and they build a structure here where they can meet and they can have like barbecues and they can have like um, a place where they can meet at and and plan this and that. But we should not give faith. We should not give trust. We should not give money to these men talking about we can do it in Africa though. You ain't showed us shit here. Why should I believe you as a woman when you never, ever built nothing in America? So you say you have a business because you're linked up to Pan-Africans globally? Colic Genesis? You're a sellout. You're a con. So yeah, they got you on the payroll to keep talking on these platforms. This is your, your job. Every time we turn around, we hear Collagenesis talking about Liberia. Everybody's angling for our money towards Africa. Nothing to do with us here. Meanwhile, we're turning up dead from being homeless. That storm that happened in New York City, I think, or whatever it's called, all those deaths that happened there, those people spent all that money for Christmas and did not know a, a, a strange storm was coming around that time. A lot of people lost their lives, not planning for the right thing. That's why it does not make sense for us to celebrate holidays. There is no blessing with, you know, spending so much money before the new year and then ending up broke at the beginning of the new year. That's the biggest, dumbest scam ever that we need to stop doing. And I said, don't celebrate holidays. And they still celebrating holidays. They still looking dumb. They're, they're still clueless. They're still spineless. But they sit up on these platforms and talk for hours. And then how Kala always insinuates, oh yeah, we can have a military over there. Who are you going to recruit, Kala? Who are you going to get to sign up for military in Africa, Kala? Nobody. You're not going to get nobody to go over there to fight and die for Africa. But he keeps spinning the line. Oh, yeah, we can do this and we can build infrastructure. We can take the, you know, the Chinese away. We can push the white people out. All this shit. We have superpowers when we land in Africa, right? Let them tell it. We become superwoman and superman when we land in Africa. And we can throw out all the Chinese people, all the white people. We can build all this stuff. No, you're going to end up being a slave again. That's what is going to happen. Let's go. You don't have a millimeter to the chest trying to bring civilization to people who don't want it. Exactly. Now you want to come fix Nigeria for me, dumbass. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not fixing it for nobody. I'm going over there to do business. Nah, don't. We don't need you. Nah, 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 nah. We don't need you guys. It's going to make you say some complicated shit. I'm just saying, I'm going there to. Nah, just go, go. Find your wife in Somalia or something. Don't, we don't need you over there, dude. Don't, just go over there. Man. Facts. Man, I'm going to get me a whole African wife, and I'm going to make sure you mad as hell. She's going to be dark, beautiful, and I'm going to just see you on the internet just hating. I just can't wait. And like, oh, he's tricking. He's a passport, bro. He hates African. And I it's not gonna work out, man. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think African women are gonna deal with you guys, man. Yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta fix yourself. Man. I don't think it's gonna deal. It is gonna be bone quick. You want bone quick on the internet? You guys are super pathetic, man. Like, you're, you're I'm a passport, bro. Getting the African wife. Yeah. 
and that's all it's gonna be. I'm gonna live a happy life with an African wife, and you're gonna be. Yeah, like, dude, the African woman is gonna dump you, man. They're not gonna. They're not gonna put up with your dumb ass, man. I don't well, she, 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 well, she's gonna stay in Africa. So. Yeah, I'm gonna put up with your character, man. So that's yeah, fine. Like, I mean, she ain't gonna be in America, so. You know how too pathetic, man. You're too pathetic. You really think I'm gonna bring my African wife back to America, dude? You're not gonna get an African wife, dude. If you can't get a woman in America, you really get it. He's, think, not, he's not even gonna work out for you in Africa. You really think I'm thinking about retiring in America <laughs> <laughs> and like living out my best years? Yeah, in America? I know. yeah you just show me you, you 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 just show me your true color today, dude. I knew you were like Kyle, man. You just like Kyle. Fake, fake mother from mother. No, no, no. I just don't like annoying. I don't like annoying did you, did you ass. Used to call, I got a question. Did you, used to, did you used to make fun of African back in the days? Like, oh, look at the African nigga. Hey, African booty. Uh, I fucking call. No, yes, like, 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 no. Like most I know Americans a lot of cats like you, man. Oh, I've been in America long enough. Motherfuckers used to get Africans. All of a sudden, they're not Okay, like, again, Mike, like I said, like most black American children, I called other black American children. I don't want to hear that bullshit, man. Okay. They won't even, I know, I know so they still look right over there. I'm coming so, and picking this on African shit. Yeah, okay. Like I said, you're a half African talking all this shit. Okay. Let me you're ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When you get off this show right now, when you get off this show right now, I start talking all these Kumaya love love shit with Kaiser. When you go back to your when you go back to your hood, do you say anything nice about Africans? Hell no. <laughs> I tell Africans to stay away from the hood if they're smart. And when you go back to your hood, you go back to different Africans, man. Get the fuck out of here. I know a lot of dudes like you, no, man. I know, no. yeah. well, one, I know a lot of dudes. Back You're back in Kala, man. Like kill. And then two, um, Africans stay away from those places. They're actually in spaces where people thrive. Uh, not like oh, half Americans like yourself that are just dusty-ass Negroes. Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, know, I, know black, I know black Americans very well. The only, well, yeah, the, only the only black American I know that really he's a whole American talking like oh I know black American I know you guys very well I, I know the real ones on the fake one I can smell the fake one from from the mile away I know the real one when I live, I know cats the, the only genuine the few genuine uh, African American that really I can know that really like black African is Brando 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 yeah you like you like Brandon and Diane Brando they like kissing your ass. No, Brandon don't kiss me. The only, the only, Brandon is the one I know that is one the African American man I know that really, really like Africans. Not because I want you to, because nah, I've been around you I guys. Nah, you're an ass kid. I know, because I know African American in and out. Trust me, I know you. I know you guys in and out. No, because it's crazy. Listen, crazy. 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 The only ones that go online, I know they're really genuinely about what they're talking about. These guys are always, do you like them because... Do you, do you know, I know, like are you saying Danny's, are you saying Danny's is fake? Are you, is that what you're telling me? Well, I don't know. I asked Danny's today. No, Danny's is real. I asked, like, yo, I had a conversation with him today. I asked him, do you like black America? He was like, well... Danny's, Danny's, you know, so the bottom... Danny's didn't run to Africa to just, no, 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 no. And you look at Danny's show, which I love my brother Danny's, but all he has is a channel and people who... Hates black America, and who says them in super chats? All black America. Who goes on his tours? Black America. And you got all this shit to say about black America, you know? And you love that. What the fuck they got to do with anything? Touring ain't got nothing to do with building anything in Africa. It has nothing to do with, you know, setting up a whole new life and trusting a whole new government and trusting all the neighboring natives of Africa. They're on the soil. Again, I've done this story before where two sisters were murdered back in 20, was it 15 in Ghana over a land dispute, y'all. Elderly black American women from Michigan went to Ghana, build their house, purchased land, were thriving and living their best life. The native Ghanas, Ghanaians got jealous they were fighting for the land or her house or something. She went to court. She won the case. Her and her sister were found in a ditch dead right after. Okay. So there is no guarantee that once you build the house, and there's another guy that lost his life after he built his house. It seems to be a common um, theme. Once the house is built, they end up dead. 
That's what happens. Then they're not in the house. Their people is not in that house. The Africans are in that house. So you are essentially sweat tearing building for others to come along whenever they want at will force you out, kill you and take your house and claim it as their own. But nobody wants to talk about the risk of that. Everybody wants to talk about this fake unity. Everybody wants to talk about how bad America's treating us while they're still trying to fight to be where we are. Okay. But again, they're so simple minded. These men could never represent me. I would never want to lay down with these types of men. I would never want to be married to these types of men. I cannot be stronger mentally than a man and be with him. No, I would rather be alone or go to an alternative lifestyle. If I have to be stronger mentally than a man, I don't need the man. I'm sorry. But listen to how weak they sound. What are you talking about? Because you don't no support him? Exactly. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. I'm telling you that. I know like, Black America was literally. No, no, no. What I'm telling you is no, no, nothing. Without no, Black America, no, Dynasty would be nothing. And we love Dynasty. I love Dynasty to death. What is that? I said my, my business. I, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you that I know people that are real and I know that I'm fake. I know black Americans are like African. Listen, listen. I'm, I, uh, uh, look at the stuff he told them. I know black Americans are generally like Africans, and I know they want to hate Africans. Listen, listen. Ass up, Mike. This, this stupid rifleman guy and this kind of, hey, Kaiser, let me tell you, these two motherfuckers there, they come on your show faking like they like you. If they end up in the alley alone with you, they'll kill you. These black Americans, these <laughs> dumb motherfuckers like this. Oh, no, no, I do. You're, no, I'm I know people you like you. I'm like, rather, I'd much rather get rid of your black ass than any African. And you half of your dude, 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 you fake, man. You fake. He is not half American. He is a Nigerian that became... American by the process of immigration. The true Americans are the ones that don't know no other place but America, which is us and Native Americans. That's it. I'm offended that Mike had the nerve to describe all of us as being immigrants. That's what they would want you to believe yourself to be because they don't want you to have a claim towards what your ancestors built here in America. So we don't have no friends. They might agree on one point, but then they're gonna always turn right back around and show their asses another way. And these types of men right here that's supposed to be vocal, that's supposed to be alpha, that's supposed to exhibit strength and leadership, they always let us down. That's why you see me tear them up on platforms because I've been watching them for months and I've been irritated for months. My buzz, my blood's been boiling for a long time. So when I hop on the panel, it's because I could not take it no more. I can't take it no more. And yes, he does look like he bleached himself. He got the nerve. He is not attractive at all. He needs to lose about 45 pounds at least. He needs to get rid of that ugly ass much. He actually needs to grow a goddamn beard if you wanna be honest about it. He would look better with a beard than that damn mustache. If you're going to do the fucking mustache, grow the fucking beard all the way in and make it clean and close to your goddamn face, dude. Lose some goddamn weight. Get some goddamn muscles. Get a goddamn spine. Don't rely on your goddamn gun all the time and rifle all the time. Bitch, you ain't it. You're not attractive. Kala stumbles and bumbles around in this conversation. He says the same parenting stuff every fucking day. He doesn't have nothing new to say ever. He is like a child with the same mentality of a little child that's just learning a new toy, building blocks. Oh, this goes with this color. Oh yeah, this matches this color right here. That's how they look and sound to me. And it's embarrassing to say this, but these men can't represent a black American woman. This is why in droves we are divesting or we become a celibate or we are we running into the arms of other women. And that's just the truth. And like I said before, which I shocked myself, I would prefer 
Black American women to link up with Africans that were born in America versus dealing with these types of men right here. Because at least they got a backbone. At least they're not scary. These men, all they got is bark, no bite. They're bitches. Let's go. So I'm yeah, real as like a I'm real as hell. Get rid of your black ass. You're you slicker than your mustache. See you already like down. Show your true color. You fucking bitch. Don't come to do. Don't step foot in Nigeria. You just stick your ass in the fuck. Go to go to one. You fuck. Who says that? Who like Nigeria? Who like Nigeria? Who like Nigeria? Who like Nigeria? Don't don't step. Don't come over there. We don't want you there, man. Don't don't. You, I don't think the DNA well, well, relates to Nigeria at all. You can't stop. I don't. Shit. I don't think your DNA relates to Nigeria. You can't stop. You can't stop. You're so low IQ. Nah, nah, nah. I don't want to. I don't want to see your dumb ass in Nigeria. I don't want to see you there, dude. You're pathetic. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you. Shut up. The lamest men alive are those types right there. Period. And then the gay punks that tapped out. The ones that are down lows, I mean. The ones that are hiding their sexuality. Okay? The ones that are proud to be what they are and they have nothing to hide. I don't mind those types of gay people. But we have so many people hiding and pretending to be something that they're not. And they keep letting us down. And it's shameful. By the way, I caught the tail end of African Millennials uh, live yesterday. And something very interesting came up before I go back to the music. There was a Cameroonian who was outright told that every civilization that has been built because everybody likes to mimic and talk about China, China, China. Look at how China has come along since they were nothing. And from 50 years later, there's something. And this African, let it be known, you know how China got ahead? Forced labor. You know, slavery, debt slaves. And you know what Magnesia said? I don't care what you have to do. Just get Africa built. That's what they believe we're to do for Africa. I'm going to do a live about that stream probably two days from now. I'm not surprised at all. I just couldn't believe she said that shit live like nobody's going to talk about it. But that's what they believe and foresee for us to be, again, at the bottom of 1.3 billion and be debt slaves to Africa or whatever way we can be re-enslaved to help build Africa. That's what they envision for us. That's why they can never go and talk about other Africans going back to Africa where they're from and build their own shit. How convenient. They're skipping themselves and volunteering black Americans to do what they refuse to do. And Magmiza had no problem saying, do whatever it takes. I don't care. Just get her built. Get it built. Oh, yeah, bitch. I'm coming for you again. I knew you were going to slip up. I knew that this fake felonious attitude of, oh, we're one. Oh, unity. You guys are so fucking fake as hell. Let me get back to the music, though. Let me get back to the music. So now, again, my argument is because we don't have real men leading, we have so many other people that's trying to dictate to us what our music is, what our culture is, what our identity is. They are disrespectful as hell. And this is why I have come out to speak up versus not speak at all. I cannot allow people to represent me worse than myself. Now, by the way, I don't know if you ever heard of this artist back in the day. This artist called Screaming Jay Hawkins. I want you guys to hear an interview of his, and I want you guys to hear some music he is, and we'll talk about his identity. Because again, like we keep saying, Black Indians were already here. He's one of them that we speak of. He's a black Indian, y'all. He's not African.
Now, I told him, I said, I won't do it. Black people don't get in that until they're dead. And that way, they don't have to worry about getting out. He said, Jay, you guys, I said, forget it. I've done you a lot of favors. I don't owe you nothing. I'll do anything you want, but I won't get in that coffin. So, I went back to the dressing room. He followed me all the way up to the dressing room. He says, you will get in the coffin. And he pulled out a big wad of $100 bills. Jay, you got to. You're going to. I said, you can't find me. But he kept on. I kept watching. I didn't want to miss nothing. <laughs> And I'd never seen a thousand dollars. And when he got the two grand, I got weak. I said, Well, I tried once, you know. <laughs> the entrance from the coffin became a staple of Jay's act, a show he still performs effectively in nightclubs worldwide. I'm still making a living, I'm still making money, and I'm still doing what I love best to get up on that stage and act like a star raving idiot. It's make believe, but most people think there really is something wrong with me. And I guess deep down in my heart, John, maybe I am crazy. But if that's the only way, if being like this enables me to go to the bank, I'm going to stay this way. Okay. He is a black Indian. I'll read a little clip about him, but I want to play some that he was like famous for before I read anything about him. I hope it won't be copywritten YouTube. I just want to showcase what he was about, how he sounded. Again, even if you have Indian heritage, you were misrepresented. You were reclassified to Negro or mulatto or colored or freedmen. That's why we keep telling y'all we have Indian ancestry. We know the truth. This man is not African, but he's called black. Okay. Let's go. I'm so weak. And I'm lonely. I hurt so bad. I won't be able to sleep. I don't understand. So I'm going to break it up so it might not get copywritten, I hope. Look at this man. This man is not an African, but he's called black still. Many of our ancestors were reclassified against their will, just like his parents, just like his grandparents. They omitted him from his own lineage of black foot. Indian, literally black foot Indian. That's enough. I don't really like him so much as an artist. <laughs> but uh, let me get to the article because I think that's more important than his music. Again, he had to mimic the greats prior to him. Um, I just don't think he's all that uh, entertaining, or at least so far what I've saw. I'm not tripping like that off of him. I'm like, okay, he's all right, but, you know. I guess back then when he was doing all that screaming, it was uh, perceived as being um, sexy or whatever the hell. But let me see if I can find his Wittapika and I'm going to read it to you. Again, people want to say that we are hating ourselves if we don't claim Africa when we have the stories of people telling us what happened to our history. We got to stop allowing these Pan-Africans come along 
and tell you who the fuck you are. Again, we are multi-raced black Americans. And we have every right to self-identify ourselves just like a transgender is self-identifying themselves with the same, uh, a different gender from what they were born with. What gives them more credence to self-identify themselves versus us? Can y'all please explain that one to me? How is it possible for them to have the ability to self-identify themselves, but there's so much uh, uh, problems when we do it? When we say we're not African, oh, that's a problem. Now look at him when he was younger. Look at him when he was younger. That's him right there. It reads, Hawkins was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. At the age of 18 months, Hawkins was put up for adoption and shortly after was adopted and raised by Blackfoot Indians. Hawkins studied classical music or piano and child and learned guitar in his 20s. In 1993 interview, Hawkins recounts uh, telling his music tour. Now, people might say, oh, he was just adopted. That man was not an African, though. I don't know if... He was raised by a Blackfoot Indian because they knew that he was related to them and they just went ahead and adopted him and they didn't tell him that he was really his people. Because a lot of people back in the olden days would either receive slaves from their own tribe to keep those people in their tribe that were deemed to be called Negro. And to avoid losing them, they adopted them or they bought, they bought them so that they would not be away from the tribe. But the man does not look like an African. He just does not. He does not. So, again, if you asked him what his nationality was, I bet you he's going to tell you he's Indian. I bet you he's going to say that his parents or somebody in his life was Indian. But... Because we have such a convoluted history with so much devastating circumstances, whether we were sold or kept or uh, reclassified and this and that and the other, you know, it's easy to lose track of who you are because the history of our government kept doing things to make it hard for us to keep up on who we were. Okay? But... He obviously, his hair don't look in, his hair don't look African. It's not even really an Afro. That man was an Indian. He was an Indian. Okay. So I want to get to some better music because that really kind of messed me up. I really didn't like him as an artist. I'm glad I didn't really know him at all. Uh, I think someone in the chat room mentioned that they had heard of him before and that he had maybe 75 kids. (laughs) That's a lot of kids. He was doing a lot of making love, I guess. (laughs) Okay, so let me go find this other song that I was looking for. If you guys haven't yet, can you do me a favor by liking and sharing the video, subscribing to my channel? And as I look for this other song, I really wanted to showcase this uh, gospel group that you can clearly hear hints of R&B. Because like, like I'm, my argument is trying to showcase, the music transformed into different genres. And you can hear the changing of the times and how it grew into other genres. And I want to showcase this uh, gospel group that was renowned for uh, gospel music. And then you'll hear their style of playing Sounding similar to um, hip hop, not hip hop, R&B, R&B. So I'm trying to find that group real quick to bring it back to the music. So please be patient. I'm going to find it in a little bit. I just can't remember which phone it's on, but it's either one or the other. Uh, Let me see. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions of music that you might want to hear, then I'll look to play that as well. Um, I think this is the right phone. I just have to go back further enough. 
I think they were called the Moss Brothers. Let me see if I if I'm if my memory is serving me right. Moss Brothers. And, and again, when one family was a singer, more or less, it came from families of people that sang too. That's why the Jacksons was so popular, and the El DeBarge or the DeBarges were so popular. The Moss Brothers. You have the the wine ends, you have the mighty clouds of joy, you have all these different family groups that was the legacy of our music. And here's an example of what I mean. This is the Moss Brothers. They're from Detroit, where I was born. And you can hear the hints of R&B coming from this style of music. You can hear the transformation from gospel to R&B with this song. Pay attention. Y'all hear R&B and pop and gospel in that song. Am I lying? Now, here's the, the Moss Brothers again. That was an older song. I think it was, uh, I wish they said all the years. I wanted to have them list the year, and it doesn't list the year. It just says it's a throwback. But here's another song by the Moss Brothers, and you can hear clearly they were developing their style, and it was coming more and more obvious they were turning into an R&B group. Let's go. Yeah. 
Could y'all hear the gospel? I mean, can you hear the gospel and the R&B in that? I can hear it. Let me find another song to give the example. You can hear the transition from gospel to R&B through those brothers. You can hear it. Here's another one. Fair use of all videos. This is them much older now. Let's see how this sound. It's called The Greatest One. Even though they were doing gospel, their style was turning into R&B right before our eyes. So I don't get struck. I'm going to play another another version or another um, style or the, or the same group. I just want you guys to hear if you guys can hear how they progressed sounding more and more R&B, though. You can tell they were influenced by that style and they were switching up from that. You hear the harmonies? They were they were popping with the harmonies, y'all. They were popping with the harmonies. They were making their way, transitioning from gospel to R and B right there. Now here is a clip I just found of Big Joe or Joe. What's his name? Joe, um, the fat Joe. And he kind of eludes an apology. I guess he's been hearing the the dragon we've been doing lately. So here he is. Let me find that clip. I just had it now. My phone want to act up. <laughs> Go figure. The devil is a lie. I have more than one phone, bitch. I most certainly do, ho. My phone tries to freeze up on me a lot for some, from time to time. Whenever I go live, um, it does it. You know. Let me see. Would be apology. Would. The apology. So he's saying an apology without saying the apology. <laughs> make that make sense. But let me know if you guys accept this apology or not. Let me know if it sounds like a proper apology for what he done caused. Okay, fair use. First thing I want to do is apologize. I am apologizing to anyone I offended. Anyone I offended, I was in hip hop, I got besides myself. I went too far.
That's the shortest apology I ever heard in my entire life, but he did say something and he already knows that he cannot be the creator of what was already created. Okay. Professor Colin, you've lost the debate. I hope that you'll be man enough to say, Hey, we misspoke. We did add on to their music. We did add our flair to their music. But their music, we learned from them first. That's all you need to say. There is no shame in taking back the lie that you try to spin. Okay? We are the culture, people. Black Americans are the culture. Please have your younger generations watch videos like mine. Tell them that I might be a little bit brass sounding, but I'm telling the truth. We don't need them to be, um, you know, uh, scary about hearing a cuss word or two about telling our, our truth. You know, I would like to talk without cussing. I wish I could talk plainly without arguing. Unfortunately, there's too many liars surrounding us. And since I'm not supported about this issue as much as I hope to be, yeah, we do have a few more people speaking up, but it should be mass numbers of us speaking. Okay, for real. And I know that the Africans, such as Afrodamas, would be like, oh, that's all you guys are known for, performers, entertainers. But what are you known for in, in, in Gambia? What have you built in the Gambia, Afrodamas? Why you want to talk shit about what we done did? What have you done did? What are the Gambians doing that have left Gambia? Have they contributed to make something go over there? No. So you can't make us feel guilted about nothing, bitch. I'm sick of these motherfuckers calling themselves shitting on us. And then some of these effeminate ass Pan-Africans will sit on the panel and hear him drag us and they won't say a peep. They'll be bitch made niggas, quiet as a lark, trying to be friendly and accepted. And oh, Aphrodimus. No, he's wrong. Go up there and slap him upside his head and tell him he's wrong. Already, where are you men to go up there and tell him to stop that bullshit talk? Where are y'all? I already know I'm going to get dropped if I show up. So that's why I don't even show up. I already know I get dropped. Okay. But it'd be nice to see someone that came from nowhere to put him in his place. It would be lovely to see that. Unfortunately, they're not doing it. And we're in a sad place to be right now as far as, as far as men leading, you know, it's really quite pathetic that we're here in this situation right now. Now, let me find something else that I, I found that I want you guys to watch real quick. Now, this is Nat King Cole. Of course, he was really famous. And look at what he did um, with Come To Me Baby. They not, they, they're not mentioning the year that he did it. I wish they did. How hard is it to put the year? But this is a vintage video showcasing Nat King Cole. Again, fair use of video for entertainment purposes and educational purposes. I really hope that YouTube will allow me to showcase our history since we have 
plenty of artists. That means there's so many artists to talk about. I don't even know half the time where to go. It's just too much material. It's too easy to win this debate. Let's go. So I won't get struck. I'm just going to play that little snippet. Now I got to talk about Ray Charles. And I love this song. Hit the road, Jack. That's all you got to tell these motherfuckers to hit the road, Jack. Please don't return no more. Don't come back here no more, no more, no more. Hit the road. Okay, let me make sure I can play it. Um, man, I hope I can play it. It says, in memory of Jack, I might not be able to play a lot of this. Um, Because, of course, Ray Charles is so famous. And isn't it, isn't it strange how... The more famous we become, other people have rights over our music and we can't even watch and enjoy our own style of music. You see how fucked up we become with allowing these people to use us and spit us out and claim the rights over the, the damn music as well. Let's go. So I don't get struck. I'm just going to stop real quick, go to the um, chat room and then play it some more. If you haven't yet, please do me a favor by liking and sharing the video, subscribing to my channel. That would be great. OK, you said uh, Ray Charles and Elvis was copycat, was a copycat, but he was cool. Yeah, they all. But again, we went back further. This is still our shit. Nonetheless, of course. Um, yeah, he copied somebody. But he was definitely a a, 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 a gem. Um, blind artists like Stevie Wonder are greats, are greats. You said that uh, Ray backup singers were off the chain. Oh, yeah. They have some beautiful, strong, excuse me, strong voices. Yep. You said um, Easy Axe, Recovering Pan-African. You love me some Nat King Cole. Nature Boy is one of my favorites. Nature Boy. Oh, is that is that the... Oh, okay, I'm thinking of Nature Nature Boy, the one from YouTube. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Silky, smooth voice he was. No one can duplicate him. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Um, You said Nature Boy. I'm going to try to see if I can find how that sounds. I don't even know if I know that song. Let me see. So we'll go back. Well, let me finish this up before I look for that song. So we'll go back to this song. Enjoy Ray Charles. Thank you. 
Man, we had it going on. Okay, so I'm going to listen to... Oh, this says remastered. I hope that they're not redoing it, though. Does that mean it's done? Um, okay, let, let me just play it real quick. I might have to stop it, though. But let's see how it sounds. First time hearing this... So I don't get struck. I have to stop it a little bit. Um, let me see what you guys are saying real quick. Uh, oh, you commented under Aphrodamus. Again, he is doing way too much. Again, I wish I could go. I wish they could not block us. But unfortunately, it is that way. So I have to listen to this clown disrespect us and not a real man go up there and say, bitch, you need to cut it out with this bullshit and drag his ass. I'm so sick of him. No one can compare to our greatness. No one should be able to snatch away our history. No one should be able to punk us into Africanizing our music and claiming it back to Africa. People are thinking that being nice to Africans who are trying to steal from us is good to do. They are not realizing that they're bankrupting us and they're trying to erase our ignicity here in America. I find it very disrespectful when people are trying to make me acknowledge Africa when Africa has nothing to do with our music here in America. When we develop the music from the pain and suffering of what we've been through caused by all parties involved. I'm not going to give credit where credit is not due. They didn't earn that credit. You don't discard people and then generations later when you ain't got shit to show for or show for in your own country, then all of a sudden jock our shit. No. Now this is Otis Redding, another famous great. Girl. 
One of the greatest, and I know you guys are going to love this song if you never heard it, but I don't know who is Black American who have never heard this artist before, Sam Cooke. My God, a change is going to come. Again, we use our music for so many different ways. We use it for civil rights. We used it for spirituals and hymns and try to help us with all the pain and suffering here in America. We use music for everything to help us in every way. And we lost our way with what we used to do. And I'm hopeful that you people will start bigging up our greats. Get your kids to listen to our greats. Get that motherfucking dumbass rap music out of our faces already. I'm sick of that crap music playing when we got this shit here. Thank you. 
greats i just started doing this type of um content um reigning woman because of the necessity that um i um went to black skin is amazing platform and seen a latino or puerto rican professor declaring that hip-hop was their music too that they helped us make that music and i'm here to remind these clowns that they're not creating nothing. They never created anything. They ad-libbed. It's like we built the house. They brought in a lime damn couch. Okay. They brought in a, a, a picture frame. They bought paint for the insides, things of that, that nature. They ad-libbed our music. They mimicked our style. They sampled our shit. They put an extra beat or two and call that shit their shit. And it's unfortunate that it kind of got me um, triggered. So you're experiencing my my triggeredness. So, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this type of music or style of content for a while because there's so much music I don't even remember or I never even experienced. Like, did you ever hear of this guy by the name of Frank Sugar Child Robinson? Okay, I'm going to play a clip of this genius child that taught himself by just simply picking up records and stuff and listening to this stuff. He became so renowned and famous as a child. Check it out. Well, you want anything else set up? Hello. Hello. Is my father there? Oh, you must have the wrong room, sonny. I have to stop it just in case they're going to try to strike me or whatever, copyright strike, whatever. But yeah, I never heard of him before. But here he is, a self-trained young little boy 
who simply heard records and taught himself how to play piano. You know, man, I didn't know, and I'm so glad that I now know. And of course, if you guys have never heard of uh, Louis Armstrong, here he is, vintage. I will have to stop this midway, but this is for educational purposes to showcase our talent and the progression of our music that began with hymns and spirituals that continued on from spirituals to gospel, and then from gospel to blues and jazz and folk, country, rock, pop, disco, funk, rap, R&B, and now hip hop. All of it is ours. We built the house that everybody mimicked. You might have variations of style, but they studied us first. We get all the credit, not Puerto Ricans, not Latinos, not Jamaicans, not Africans, nobody but Black Americans. And we have to stand up for ourselves. People are bulldozing over us because we have these types of Pan-African men who are trying to get some pussy. And so they're selling themselves out for the opportunity to dream and fantasize about getting pussy and so they're not standing there square and standing up for us righteously therefore i'm forced to do these lives i don't mind because i'm learning it might inspire me to rewrite again and sing again so let's go ladies and gentlemen a little light spiritual called nobody knows the trouble i've seen Again, everybody always start at the beginning. Most of the artists that you will always hear started with gospel or spirituals. Then they moved on to blues. Then they went on to jazz. Then they went on to all the other forms of music. But we have a base of gospel and spirituals first. And then we lean in on all the other genres. It it had hints of other elements of music, you can hear the progression of the music from the styles that change and 
transform into di different genres. You can hear it. Let's go. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Oh, yes, love. Sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Oh, yes, love. Oh, no. The trouble I see, nobody knows but Jesus. Now, I don't particularly care for his voice too much. I think that I liked him playing the, um, what is it, the uh, trombone or the trumpet. Most of all, I think he's most famous for playing the instrument versus singing. But still, he had to listen to the greats previous to him to get an ear to play the instrument that he became famous for. Um, so even though I don't really particularly care for his voice, it's, you know, he still taught himself how to um, listen and how to play the instrument better by following the greats prior to him. And I know I've been playing a lot of men, so I'm about to switch over to women uh, artists. Here, of course, is Aretha Franklin. She is really, was a trailblazer for many women and also men listened to her, well, her style. A lot of them mimicked her style. It's still our music though, all of it.
It's obvious that she comes from a gospel back black background. It's obvious. You can hear it in her voice. You can hear it in her tone. You can hear it in her range. Most black Americans, um, beginning begins with gospel. Most of our beginnings begin with either gospel or jazz, but they always reference back to gospel because that is the foundation of our music to begin with. All of us. I, whenever I write a song, I start off with gospel first. Start off with gospel before I went to jazz and R&B and alternative. I started with gospel first. Man, I missed that song. My goodness. I am hooked, y'all. I don't know if you guys have heard this artist before. I have never myself. Frankie Lamont, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? I know I heard the song called Why Do Fools Fall in Love, but I didn't know the name of the artist. This was back in 1965. He was fairly young. Let's take a listen for this. Again, this is for research and entertainment purposes only. Let's go. I feel you would um, too many men are sounding too feminine and all that. Um, think, tell me of an artist you want to hear that's more manly. I know Teddy Pentegrass I can play. But while, while you put something in the chat room, I want you guys to rehear Mahalia Jackson with Martin Luther King. For those that didn't catch the live um, earlier today.
Man, I love to see, I love to see Martin Luther King smile, man. I wish I was alive to see him smile, man. But here's Teddy Pendergrass. This is one of my uh, favorite songs by Teddy Pendergrass. Since you like lower voices, <laughs> here's one for you. That was when music was music. Now I'm going to play Keith uh, Washington. I think this one is called You Make It Easy. I'm not sure if I remember this song or not. Um, I followed his first album. I don't know if he made a second album and I maybe didn't follow him as much as I did the first album. But yeah, I like Keith Washington too. But his voice doesn't sound that deep though to me. I'm 
Again, he's more a jazz um, singer. You could tell he has hints of gospel. You could tell that he studied the greats previous to, as most singers do. We have to start somewhere. We have to listen to other people to get our own tone, to get our own form. And then we sprout out and do our own thing with words and whatnot. But we still have to learn from p previous people prior to give them accolades and homage. You can't just say I, I made myself. Michael Jackson gave homage to James Brown and others. Prince did as well, gave homage to the people before him. Jimi Hendrix uh, uh, helped Prince and other artists that they always admit it. Why is it so hard for other cultures to admit that they learn from us? Are we the lowest people in the earth, apparently these people are acting like we're the lowest, the low. And we got to raise our standards to stop this bullshit. Here's Barry White, here we go.
Man, I miss the bands, y'all. I really miss the orchestration. I really miss the strings. I miss all that composition. Man, we missed a great. Barry White was, man, he was unique. No one could, could touch him. His voice was phenomenal. Now, I don't remember this artist right here. Maybe I remember the song. I'll tell you if I remember or not. Let's listen to this. I don't think it's loud enough. This phone is a little bit for some reason. Let me find a, my other phone um, to make it louder, a little bit louder. Hold up, hold up. Lattimore. Yeah, I love Phyllis Hyman. That's another influencer of mine. I was so torn up when she um, committed suicide. I was really torn up because she was truly uncomparable to anything we have ever heard since her death. I'm going to play her my favorite song by her. I wonder if the same um, song resonates with you. Of course, all her music, though, was great. Let's get there. Let's get to this. That's better. Oh, that's not the right song, though. Hold on. Uh, is that the same song? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, it is. <laughs> I like the, I love the bass in that song. Man, that's what I'm talking about. I miss bands. I miss natural bass. Let's listen to it again. That's right. I believe a woman loves stronger than a man. That's for damn sure. But you see, sometimes we just don't seem to understand. I know because you see, I'm speaking from experience. Because I came home one day and my woman was just going all around the house. Not having very much to say. And 
and I was kind of puzzled. I didn't know what to do. So I looked her straight in the eye and I said, sit yourself down, girl, and talk to me. And tell me what's on your mind. Don't you keep on telling me everything's okay. Cause if it wasn't, you wouldn't be alive. Wow. I remember hearing the song, but I didn't know who the artist was. <laughs> I didn't remember the name, but I do remember that song. Wow. Now I know. Thank you for sharing that. Now he reminds me of Anthony Hamilton, doesn't he? And he also reminds me of, um, who else? And just slipped my mind. But let me play a small snippet of um, Anthony Hamilton to let you hear what I hear. Oh, Bobby Womack as well. And then I'm going to play Phyllis Hyman because Phyllis Hyman, man, she about to set this world on fire with her vocals. So let's play um, Charlene. Now 
See, he sounds similar to that man. And also Bobby Womack. Here is Phyllis Hyman, one of my favorite songs by her. I found a live of her. And it doesn't look like it's going to get copywritten. I might have to stop it just in case one time. But you're going to hear a very, very special, gifted, talented woman. I wish she still was here because her voice is unlike any other. Unfortunately, I got a call here in Japan uh, letting me know that one of my dear friends had also died. And uh, this song conjures up all sorts of images for me. I think about my mom and dad who are alive, my friends, sometimes ex lovers. I'm going to find another version because she's too emotional. She just lost a friend, so she is um, really emotional. But I'm going to find a better version right here. But, yeah, she was deeply in tune with her music, deeply in tune with her words. When she wrote, she meant what she wrote, or what she sang, rather. She meant every syllable of what she sang, and you can hear it
kids and let the things we used to do. Our memories that only linger a sunny day. You touch the light in such a special way. Wow. She made me think of my great uncle, man, that just passed about a few years ago, man. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up in a half an hour. Shoot me what you guys want to hear. I'm going to play right now Isley Brothers for the Love of You or Living for the Love of You. That's one of my favorites by the Isley Brothers. Shoot me what you guys want to hear. I'm going to do another one in a couple of more days, another part. I want to go back to Black Skin is Amazing to address my discoveries, to showcase some of these videos, to slap up these lying uh, fake uh, professors. I'm so sick of these clowns. Okay, so here we go with the Isley Brothers. It gives me more than enough time to see what you guys want me to play. I'm going to play the whole song. This shouldn't be copywritten. 
This is for the love of you. Everybody knows who the ha- the Isley brothers are. Everybody that's black American. They should. If they don't, something wrong. Each 
each and every day. Oh, oh, oh. Write that down. Live the love of you. Man, it's bringing it back, y'all. It's coming back to me. The next one you guys want to hear is uh, Mother's Finest, a black rock band. Love Changes. Okay, I have never heard of that. I might have heard of the song, though. I just don't remember the name. Let's see if I remember what that is. Love Changes. Or what? Wait, love. Yeah, changes. Interesting name called Mother's Finest. I never, I don't know if I heard this song before. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha 
Wow. Yeah, I remember that song. I just couldn't remember the name of the um the band. But again, our greatest was bands, man. Why did we get tricked out of I mean, we have older groups that still do bands, but what why are we playing music no more? What what the fuck happened? Now here's Frankie Frank Frankie Beverly. This is one of my favorite songs by them. Let's go. Is it too low? Because it's kind of too low on my end. I'm not sure. I'm going to keep playing it, but is it too low? When we gave up bands, we became lazy, y'all. 
the best thing we did was do bands. We got to bring that stuff back. I wish I could play an instrument. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I don't know how to play piano or nothing. But here's Freddie Jackson, one of my favorites. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Oldies but goodies. Freddie Jackson. Freddie Jackson, my God. Here we go. Marvin Gaye in the house. 
You know, I'm going to put it on my other phone. It's too low. I don't know why certain songs are louder than others. It is so frustrating to me, though, sometimes. Hold on. Let me uh, make sure you guys can hear it. Uh, Marvin Gaye. We, yes, we definitely, I definitely got to bring him up in his earlier songs. Next video, I'm going to talk about Marvin Gaye more because we got to talk about him. He was definitely one of the greater singers <clears throat> out here. Hold on, I'm coming. By the way, thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate you guys supporting this content. I'm definitely going to keep doing this content. I really feel like you know, if we don't take it serious, um, others are going to keep doing what they're doing. And it's going to be harder if we just continually to wait for them to do right by us. So I'd rather just do it on my own. Marvin Gaye, where are you? Um, and not leaving it to the hands of effeminate men who have tapped out, who are trying to get again pushy and they would rather sell out our whole culture versus be a man and stand on your square and, and just represent yourself. Women be attracted by you for being you and having confidence in who you are. When you're trying to be somebody else, they got to look at you very disrespectful. <laughs> They're not looking at you mannish. They're not looking at you manly. When you bent over trying to beg somebody else to care, to accept you, come on, that's not, that's not manly. That's ridiculous. And so it's my job, it's our job to set the record straight if these men are too dumb and lame to do it. So all I need is you guys to do me a favor by liking and sharing the video and subscribing to my channel help grow my channel, and hopefully, you know, it, it, it will stick and resonate for others to do the same because my goal is to inspire others to do what I'm doing so that we can shut these motherfuckers up. And so when they come in our spaces and our faces talking about, this is Africa's music, this is Jamaican's music, this is Puerto Rican's music. It's like, excuse me, have you bumped your head? Are you okay, bitches? Are you okay? Do you need some therapy, a doctor? Do you need a group hug? You're fucked up. You're wrong. You got to have the confidence to stand up to these clowns, not let them have some type of so-called degree, calling themselves a professor, somehow dissuade you or you know, discourage you from checking them. I'm not going to be scared. I got every right to tell the truth, just like they're telling lies. If they can sit up there and lie, comfortable. I should be able to sit up there and tell the truth, comfortable. You, you feel me? Get up, get up, get up, let's make it up to 
Yes, y'all. One of the best singers that who ever done it, whoever did, who to ever do it, brother. Oh, this echo is bothering me. Hold on. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat room. I'm gonna play "A House Is Not a Home" by Luther Vandross. One more song of my choice, and I'm out. Let me conclude um, before I play those last two songs. Thank you for giving me your um, suggestions. I'll do that again towards the end of every live that I do this content. If I can find it, I'll play it. Um, so to, to, to give an understanding to why I'm doing these videos now, we're, we're really having an issue with standing up for ourselves, in my opinion, to the various groups of other people that came here after we've been here forever. I wish that we would have been in our own skin, proud to be who we are. I wish that we would have listened to the likes of Frederick Douglass and others that talked about the need to claim your Americanness. But somehow, his past speech called The Lessons of the Hour somehow was not passed down to us generation, generations ago. Instead, we heard this Marcus Garvey mumble jumbo. Even though after finding out that he was a fraud, he never went to Africa. He never decided to go there. Even when he got deported back to Jamaica, he ended up dying in London or England. So when he died, as far as I'm concerned, that lie died too. However, people in our so-called Black Caucus and others that are in power are trying to force us to have to accept their decision, their slapping hands behind the scenes and shaking hands and signing off and making deals and paying off our Black Caucus and other so-called Black leaders to forward this notion of Pan-African again as if we've always been on board with it. None of us have. Only a handful have. And the only handfuls that are doing that are weak-minded people who cannot stand up for themselves and represent themselves as a woman or a man in their own square 
telling these other groups of people that come here who we want to be perceived as, as American. Somehow we decided to be everything else but an American. We hear about people calling ourselves Indian now, although we might have Indian ancestry here in America, of course. We're multi-race people. We're the only people that have had our identity snatched from us and changed so many times. And it's up to us to tell these people boldly, clearly, we don't want you identifying with us and we don't want you trying to tell us what we're going to identify as. We didn't tell you to come and we're not telling you what to call yourself. You came and told us what you are when you got here. And now that you are filling yourselves, you want to replace us with our identity and use it against us for your benefit of your own people, wherever you come from and not our benefit while we've been struggling, the face of death, the face of sacrifice, everybody has been using our deaths for their benefit and not our own. And the reason being is because a lot of us are not prideful to be who we are. We've been told by so many different people, it's white supremacy, all this other stuff. Now we want to claim to be either Moors, Christians, Pan-Africans, Africans, Eidos, FBA, and all the other names that I'm not thinking, oh, the latest, uh, Israelite, Hebrew Israelite, so forth and so fucking on. But when you're juggling with different hats of different ideologies, you lose your premise of who you are, which is simply the indigenous American. The people that built America, even if it wasn't with our hands, it was with our labor. It was with the stealing of our land. It was with the burning down of different homes and different um, properties and different businesses and towns and cities, you name it. It happened to just us here. Yes, of course, other people from other lands struggled with their own stuff, but they are they were the majority. They were the majority where they came from. They came to be counted among us, and now they feel some kind of way that they can be a better American version than we are. And the reason why they're able to do that, because we have, again, it's not the women doing this as much as the men are doing this. Now women are starting to do this, but they're following the lead of these effeminate, weak-minded men who don't want to say, hey, I'm a man first. I'm an American. I'm sorry you came over here with you know messed up tales to tell about what's going on in Africa or Jamaica or Haiti or wherever else they may have come. But I am an American. Welcome to America. I'm not changing my identity because you said so. No one is pressuring Haitians to call them Africans. No one's pressuring Jamaicans to call them African. No one's pressuring other Africans to call themselves Africans. They have their own view of tribalism. No one is trying to strip them of their identity. Everyone's trying to strip us of ours, though. That's why the conversation of us protecting our culture, starting with music, which is the fiber of our culture, music is the first thing to go with trying to rewrite history. And I'm not having it. So I am doing more lives to talk about our history in hopes to give more confidence that we are lacking in, in hopes to inspire other people to speak about this type of content versus the gender warring, versus celebrity gossip, versus all the different deaths of all these different rappers, which, by the way, there was a rapper that just died from another overdose. I can't keep up. A female rapper died, y'all, of an overdose. What is her name? Let me find it again. And it's because people don't have nothing to hang their hat on as far as having pride. That's what's going on. So we're now allowing ourselves to become more and more deluded and risking our life 
for the sake of being accepted by other groups of people that will never, ever, never, never, ever accept you. They'll pretend like they do, but they're laughing at you. They're laughing at you. They know that you will never be what they are. They know that our blood is mixed. So it's okay to accept who you are. It's okay to be prideful of what the accomplishment of what your people have accomplished. If you give it away, these other groups of people will take it. And that's exactly what they're attempting to do right now. That's what they're doing. So I might not sound as feminine as you would like me to sound like. I'm sorry. I had a rough pass. I can't, I can't sound feminine. That shit's out the window. But what I am is direct, transparent, as honest as I can be. I'm not saying that I have all the answers. I'm not saying that I never make mistakes, but I am true to me. And I'm going to be as true as I can be for this content moving forward in hopes that we can stop these motherfuckers feeling more confident to disrespect us even more. Akon opened more of our eyes about all the disrespect that he continually tells us about how he don't give a flying fuck about what we feel like, what we're going through. He just wants to use and abuse us for all these lies that he wants to tell us. And because we're not, you know, listening to his words, he's kind of feeling some kind of way about it. And so he's coming and attacking us with our performance of um, artists. Yes, the rap right now is trash. And it, it didn't make it better with having other black people, you know, pretending to mimic us and making the, the music worse. I don't even listen to that trap. I don't even listen to that mess no more. I barely listen to rap anymore. I only go look and research who've been the latest people to get murdered. And then I go find their music and say, oh, do I remember any of these songs? I literally don't know these clowns. And it's sad, but I literally don't know everyone that has died in the last four or five years. I have not known not one of those rappers because I have not been listening. I've been listening to old school or other music other old school from different genres. That's what I've been doing. I listened to old rap because it had more meaning back then. But now we have lost our way with allowing people to give us a narrative that's fitting to what they want to run their narrative to hijack and co cosplay us away from our square for being the indigenous Americans. They want to tell you that you're an immigrant just like them. Where? How? When this government tells immigrants to get, get gone, they know where they're going. We have no place to go. I don't want no place to go to. I don't trust Ghana at all. I don't trust no African country at all. I don't trust their leaders. I don't trust their intentions. I don't trust. I don't trust. They owe an awful lot of money, and that's why they're trying to get all cozy with us, because they wish for us to be debt slaves. And that's why they want to call us African and we're brothers and sisters and all that shit. But they don't mean it. They just want you to feel good about being called something by them because somehow they think we're supposed to be impressed. And I'm confused on why that would be. I'm confused on why people are trying to act like they're convinced that these people have a better intention for us than we should have for ourselves. They have never shown their own people on the ground good intentions. They just got $55 billion from our government, leaving us virtually impossible to get reparations for ourselves. It's a walking joke. We're a walking joke talking about reparations when our country is basically imploding, imploding our system, our government. They're bankrupting us. We're being boxed out of our own struggles. And meanwhile, while we're being boxed out, all these vipers, all these snakes, all these vultures are swooping in, all in your ear on platforms, or all in your face telling you, you got to acknowledge Africa or you hate yourself. But where is the Africans acknowledging Africa at? 
Why can't Akon show his leadership to get on board with his plans to build Africa through the Africans who know more about Africa than we do? Why are they skipping all those people and going straight to us? Because they have a vision for us, and that's called debt slavery. That's what I know. Okay, and that's why they're trying to cozy up to us. Now Ghana is working ever so hard trying to be in the ear of Meek Mills talking about Ghana. He got his phone stolen, though, what, while, while performing there in Ghana. Of course, they gave his phone back because it was shown that someone stole his shit while he was trying to get on stage or off stage. I can't remember which one it was. And, and Meek Mills was trying to tell the people to release the thief because we're supposed to turn the other cheek. I am so tired of these weak representations of men. If you keep following behind these celebrities, you're going to follow yourself to a genocide somewhere there in Africa. That's how I feel about it. Those celebrities we should not be listening to. We should not be following. They are puppets of those people that sent them. They're telling them, instructing them what to do in hopes to garner influence to us. And they thought that a Meek Mills was influential to us, just like Akon's not, he ain't either. I don't give a damn. Usher was over there, fuck that bitch too. All of them. I could care less what artists you get. You could even have Stevie Wonder go over there. And I love Stevie Wonder, but Stevie Wonder can't get me to go nowhere either. He can't get me to change my mind. Nobody. I am steadfast in thinking about us being an American. And until you have the same mindset I have, you will always be able to get played. You're always going to be asked to give up money. And you can possibly bankrupt yourself to nothing. And once you don't have nothing, who are you going to call? That's my question. Once you're bankrupt, once you're homeless, who you gonna call? No one's gonna help you that's been in your ear all this time talking about unity and Pan-African talk. They're liars, all of them. That's why I'm anti-Pan-African because I see it as a means and a way to use emotionalism to us against us because of our hyper-emotionalism and why we're so emotional, because we have a lot of men that, again, don't want to abide by any law, don't want to be accountable for anything, and anything is better than what you have to deal with. And so they have this mindset of escapism, and so they're looking for a way to escape through sex, through travel, through passport bros, through all these other things, pretending to be pimps and gangsters and all this stupid shit. We're not able to rely on these men in, in a large amount of numbers. We're just not. Yes, we have a few good ones still that is not online. They're not online speaking for us, though. And the only voices that we hear is people that saying, I retreat, I tap out, I do what you tell me to do. I'll be what you say I am. That's not the way to be. You're losing your identity based on a fallacy, a lie that's been spun and told to you a hundred years ago. We got to stop allowing these lies to prevail and tell the truth against all odds. So that's why I'm doing these lives. I'm going to play A House Is Not A Home and then one more. Maybe you might not know this last artist I'm going to play, but it's one of my favorite artists that influenced me in the 80s. And so I'm going to play that. But first, I'm going to play A House Is Not A Home. One of my favorites of um, Luther Vandross, A House Is Not A Home. Everybody that is a Black American knows this song. If you don't, you've been living under a rock. Okay. I hope you have not been living under a rock like that. Okay. So let me find a version that won't get, I hope, uh, struck. This song is deep. He was one of the best vocalists to ever do it. 
I think he's considered pop and R&B. Of course, he did gospel as well. This man was a genius. We missed a lot of different greats in the last five to 10 years. We got to remember these people. Oh, please be there. Stay. 
Perfection, perfection, man, when he died, wow, that was a big loss. <sighs> Let me see what you guys are saying. I got one more song and I'm Audi 5000. I really appreciate everybody for showing up. I really am glad that people are experiencing the music with me. I hope that this encourages you to not um, surrender to people's uh, setting us up and uh, again, selling us out. Um, let me see. Let me see what you guys are saying real quick. I think I seen something about yeah, I I am shadow I'm shadow banned and I did get taken out because I talked too much truth. And it's sad that we're being censored while everybody else that's not representing us is able to speak every freaking day. He said, "Yes, a few African countries will dangle the citizenship carrot and some of us will bite, but it's a fantasy to think Africans would take all of black America. They will become exomic phobic on steroids. Exactly. A lot of these people are longing for the day to put hands on us. Truth be told. A lot of them have been hating us for a very long time. Truth be told. Places that used to sell those slaves of old know damn well that they're not panning out better than the ones that they sold and they're mad and they don't want us to be the face of black anymore. That's what's going on. They want us to accept them to replace our face of black, even though they were never known to be black and make us feel like we're unifying with them, you know, switching us out and replacing us. I just never, ever heard this nonsense that's going on here, but it's happening in real time. Nobody wants citizenship in droves like that, though. <clears throat> citizenship to go to a land that don't take care of your people and starve, beg, plead, or also get your voice taken for good to where you can't even speak up about nothing because the police can come and arrest you or kill you for speaking out against the government. I want to replace them there and have them come here in my stead and me not have a voice, me have to tread lightly because the men can put hands on you and no one's going to stop. Cops are not going to be called. Nothing's going to happen if a man puts his hands on you in Africa, but they don't want to talk about that though. 
they're continually selling us the notion, oh, we'll get away from white people, but you're trying to scramble to come to the white countries that you claim you don't care to deal with whiteness. And on top of that, more and more white people are moving to Africa and Chinese are there galore. Everyone's there. There is no escaping this whiteness that you speak on or white supremacy that you speak about or exomic phobic, whatever. It happens a lot more than we realize. It's just not televised, but it happens over there. Tribalism happens over there all the time. But we're being sold, oh, it's not that bad. It's the white media trying to sell you out and not have you come here, brothers and sisters. We know if you return, things are going to turn around. That's not what they mean. They want your dollar. They want you to be debt slaves. That's the truth. I've been proving it on my last channel. I'll do another live again, probably with Afro goddess talking about Ghana yet again who always got African-American in his mouth, who's propping up different celebrities in hopes to get in the ear of us, in hopes to have us resonate with any of these clowns, don't bite. Don't believe the lie in which they're selling us. It's not productive for you to wish to go to a barren land with no resources that you can claim as your own. Those resources belong to the natives, and they're not even getting them. Think about that. They say they have resources in Africa, but the natives are not able to get a hold of those resources. They're not able. So how are we able? Make it make sense. How are they able to mind trick and fuck us so easy? Because of the likes of Pan-Africans who are looking for coochie. Okay. They sign up. They're like, oh, I'll be exposed to other women. I might make, might be able to find a wife. And I don't mind tapping out. I don't mind grabbing those knee pads to be accepted and claimed. I don't mind. But you won't be viewed as an alpha male. You're going to be at the bottom over there in Africa. If we go there a large number, which I know we're not, it's going to be bad. It's going to be exomic phobic against us. Me speaking this way is hateful. Let them tell it. But it's not hateful until something bad happens. And then all of a sudden, well, you should have researched better. You should have known. You should have listened and, and, you know what I mean? All these things that they'll say after the fact while telling you to trust and believe while they're making money off of lying to you. We're the only one that has this burden to bear. And I'm sick and tired of people assuming that we have to do and believe however others are instructing us to do like we're little sheep. We're not sheep. Raise your standards. Go back to history and relearn what you forgot. Get this pride in your spirit and be able to be bold. Get emboldened by watching me. A lot of times I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. I just do. I'll figure it out when I get there. That's what I do. I'll figure it out when I get there. But what I'm not going to do is sit by while these men who are making a mockery and a foolery out of us as a collection of people to basically be on platforms, giving up the booty on their knees, any way they can get it, they want it. They don't care about our future. They don't care about our existence in America. They want us to believe that we will have better success but you got to know that before it gets better, it has to get much, much worse. And that means a lot of sacrifice, deaths, has to occur. Think about the genocide that happened in Ethiopia, maybe still happening, and other places that happened in times past. Yes, Rwanda is doing real good now. But back in 1993-94, they weren't doing so well with a genocide. 800,000 people plus had to perish 
for Rwanda to be where it's at today. Do we need to go in droves in Paris to have genocide and then we'll get it? Why do we have to go through it and find out too late on anything? Why can't we know and discern in our spirit that what we're being told is an outright lie and say, no, we don't want that. You have at it with those Africans that left your country and talked to them about this building of anything. Leave us be. We're not bothering you. Stop bothering us. It's not rude to tell you you're tepping, you're you're stepping too far um, on our toes, and we don't want you there. It's not mean or divisive. It's telling the truth. Okay, someone invites you to dinner. Are you going to be forced to have to go? No, you choose to go or you don't. It's easy as that. If I want to go, I'll go. If I say I don't want to go, I'm not going to go. Stop allowing people to dictate to you what to think, how to feel. Have your own damn brain. We had our own damn brain when it came to music. We can have our own damn brain in this day and age, in 2023. You have to think about yourself and your people and your family. Stop putting everybody ahead of you. They're never going to do that for you. Not a one, not a one culture would ever do that for you. So how are you feeling bad about not allowing them to do it, do it to you too? Why would you feel bad? Now here's the last song I'm going to play. I was going to play a male, but since I played Luther, which was a longer song than usual, I'm going to play Stephanie Mills and I'll do Glenn Jones on my next slide. That's the one I was about to play. Let's go. Home is America. When you think of home, think of America.
Come back home, y'all. Come back to yourself. Go back to the core of what we were. Go back to hymns. Go back to spirituals. Go back to gospel. Go back to old school songs. Go back to the feelings and memories that you forgot about and who you were while you were a child loving on these songs, singing and humming and all that stuff. Bring yourself back to what you were. Stop allowing social media to ruin you. Yes, I've been on social media since 2018. I have not changed a tittle other than get smarter, (laughs) other than be more observant, other than speaking more on my behalf, and other than being more bold. But I have not changed my opinion, and I haven't changed my mind. I am not going to flip-flop from my content. I hope that you guys will support the truth as it should be explained. And I'm not going to get punked by no Pan-African and no other African and no other non-Black person or another Black immigrant that came here to tell me what the fuck I got to do and how I got to believe when you ain't convince your own people that. You ain't convince your own people that. Start there. Convince your own people that. Stop trying to scapegoat Black Americans because I'm not having it. So with that being said, thank you all for appearing. Again, all videos shown was for fair use, for educational purposes, for research purposes, for the truth to be realized and denied lies. This is not about hating. It's about loving myself. It's about accepting who I am through my true ancestors of America. I'm not going to forget about those people because you showed up. I'm going to talk about them. Those are the ones that earned my respect because I'm alive still. There's a few family members that let me down, I must admit, beginning with my mom and father but the toils of my grandparents and great grandparents that have nothing to do with what my parents did, they still persevered for me to be here. I'm not dropping them for y'all. Sorry, not really. Love yourself despite the lies being spun in these spaces. With that being said, again, like, share, subscribe, bless up, enjoy the music. I'll be back with another hot Redemption of other songs that I'll be showcasing. We'll be tapping into more jazz. We'll transition to disco and funk and things of that nature. But we need to understand the roots are not going to change because other people said so. Unless you are punked 
into allowing them to make you believe a lie. I'm the truth. I'm going to represent the truth and stand in my square, irregardless of others. That's not going to do it. If you don't like what I'm doing, then you need to do it better. Okay? Bless up.